accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order is minutes. Madam Chair, I move to approve the November 18th, 2019 regular session minutes as written. Second. I have a motion. Is that second? Second by Mr. Schultz. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Madam Chair, I move to approve the November 18, 2019 executive session mi minutes as written. Second. The motion and the second by Mr. Schultz. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, public comment. Is anyone here for public comment? Okay, moving right along to board member reports. Would any board members like to provide any reports? No? I'll make a comment. <laughs> okay, Mr. Mr. Walner. So um, it's very exciting. It, I don't think I'm spilling on Mike's thing, but um, the CPC did finish the final of the 10-year master plan so um, you know you can read through the 159 pages or I'm going to share with the board a summary highlights um, and you can just look over what they're talking about and uh, tomorrow night Mike if I'm talking about anything you're going over this is what Danielle had prepared for us and you have one um, and it just gives you know the bullets of what this this is all about and where the main emphasis is and I think it's a great summary of what's all inside there I know they're getting together tomorrow to, to talk about how to get the word out to the town. I'll be glad to sit in and help out any way I can, but it's just very exciting to see this come to fruition. And I realize it's like seven years of people's putting a lot of time in. Residents, town employees, you know, volunteers, committees have put a lot of time into all these studies, and it's really nice to see this come together after seven years. And it's, it's really meaningful data. So. Um, that's one thing I'll say about that. And it's also exciting to know the CPC um, looks like they selected a vendor for um, consultant for doing the, the wastewater package treatment plant at the intersections of 62 and 28. And, um, and there is a um, aspect of development of that area. The, the, the ones they selected are the ones that I thought were the best of the three. So we're on the same page and I, I was asking for an update too. The facilities master plan as well. They picked the supplier um, for doing the facilities master plan, also with some sort of an emphasis on the 6220 step. Yep. And uh, so all these studies are coming together, and you know, hopefully, you know, six to nine months, we're going to have the results of all these studies, so we can put a big plan together. You know, to 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 to, to weigh out how sewage fits in, how what buildings we need, how this fits in with downtown. And the last thing is I know it's going to come up in January is the, um, the COA and the uh, SSAT team from the CIT group, um, the age friendly. A lot of initials you got there once. Yeah, don't make me define it. will take you an hour. Um, anyways, the people that are concerned about the, old, the, aging, you know, the aging well initiative in January, we're going to hear some proposals about that. And so all these coming together are very exciting times for our town. So. Glad to report on that, that does good news. And just to echo what you said, to thank the CPC and the Master Advisory Group, the members of the Master Advisory Group, and the Town Planner for all the efforts over the length of years and years that they've yeah. put into this. This is, this is really good. It's really a good culmination of a lot of efforts. So, so it's nice we're going to be able to see the, um, see the results of it and be able to weigh in on right. a future direction for the town. So it's wonderful. Thank you. Any other board member reports? All right, moving right along. Next order of business is the review and vote for special employee status. Madam Chair, I move to reconfirm the vote of December 17, 2018, designating the following positions 
as having special municipal employee status pursuant to MGL Chapter 268A, parks and rec, infant toddler instructor, after school instructor, coach, summer program instructor, coach, summer program director, summer program assistant director, summer counselor. <coughs> Police, matron, crossing guard, council on aging, van driver, finance committee, recording secretary, Police Department co-facilitator for the Youth Action Team and to add the following position as having special municipal employee status pursuant to MGL Chapter 268A, Library Substitute Library Technician. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <coughs> Public hearing. We have maybe four and a half minutes before the 7:30 hour that it was advertised. So why don't we try to okay. let's 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 skip to number 11. I think we could probably resolve that one. I'm sorry to go. This is what I always do. Can you? <laughs> can you <laughs> Legal bill. We finish that one. We can do number ten probably easily, relatively easily. Too. By the time I find it, we could probably do the public. <laughs> that time. Okay. Ten. I know. Ten and eleven. I think we can accomplish. <laughs> that's ten. Yeah, grab ten. Well, that's we'll, ten. We'll move on yeah, to we'll number ten. ten. Yeah. We can do ten. It's got to get done now or later. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, I move to appoint Mark Hamill to the Facilities Master Plan Committee as a representative of the Department of Public Works through June 30th, 2020. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Gilberto. Very brief explanation. So Mr. Hamill will take the seat held by former Town Building Superintendent Julie Spur Knight, who was donating her time um, to the committee service. Uh, after her departure, uh, however, the, the scheduling of the meetings and her work responsibilities have proved to be um, uh, difficult to balance, I think, and so uh, we appreciate her, her time for the past few months, and uh, we welcome Mark to the committee, Mark being the new town building superintendent. Great. All right. This is a roll call name vote. Any other discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Uh, Mr. Hamill. Hamill. Mr. Hamill. Mr. Walner. Mr. Hamill. Mr. Schultz. Mr. Hamill. Ms. Gonzalez. Mr. Hamill. And Mr. Hamill. Okay. I'll look again. Might be stuck to something. Might be stuck. Yes. We don't seem to have legal bills. Hmm. Do you have the, uh, the motion or no? Do you have a copy of it? Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for October 2019 in the amount of $14,675.09 as follows. Copelman and Page, 677759. Copelman and Page, Labor, 3159. 20 Elm Street, 40B Project, 4738.50 for a total of $14,675.09. Second. I have a motion and a second for the members. As you know, it's in the packet. They were pretty detailed um, billing. There was quite a bit of work done by the by our legal firm. So, motion, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. We can move on to the public hearing, which is number seven. And I'm just going to read the public hearing notice while we... Yep. Read his digest, large perversion. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I need my glasses for this one. The Town of North Reading Select Board Notice of Public Hearing in accordance with Chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Laws. A public hearing will be held by the Select Board in Room 14, 235 North Street on Monday, December 16th at 7.30 p.m. 
on the application of smokes and snacks inc for a change of directors and officers and new stockholder and transfer of stock license to be exercised at 202 north street north reading massachusetts and i see the licensee here with his representative yeah. why don't you come up introduce yourselves and we can begin the hearing yeah. Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Tom Truex of Salem, Massachusetts, here on behalf of the, the, um, the corporation Smokes and Snacks, Inc. To my left here is Mr. Vimal Patel. He is the proposed new manager. He's also the new proposed new shareholder, president, director, and treasurer of the corporation. Um, essentially what he's doing is um, at Moran Patel's interest in the corporation, which was a 50% interest, he is purchasing that interest. He's also replacing Mr. Um, Atran Patel as the president, treasurer, and director of the corporation. Um, Mr. Patel comes before you with a little coming up on the third year anniversary of the store when it was purchased. Um, he's been there from the get go. Um, he comes with uh, that experience working at the store all that time. He's full time there. Um, he's SIPS, TIP certified, and we expect the transition from the current uh, manager, Sonal Patel, to him to be pretty much seamless. Glad to answer any questions you may have. Members have any questions? Just basically, it, it's a family transaction, right? So, some things change other than on paper and. Well, there is there is money being transferred. There's money being transferred, but as far as responsibilities and all the rest, of it, right? He's pretty much been assuming the responsibilities for a number, for a while now, anyway. Yes, yeah. from the get go. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Gilberto. The. Current manager of record, uh, so Sonal, I believe, is that individual's name. It, will that person still be involved or no? No. No. Okay. <coughs> Anyone else? else? I, will, I will note that um, um, that uh, the applicant has been submitting um, serve safe documentation along with the renewal packet each year. So we, I, we, on paper, we've had him as an employee at the establishment as well. Great. So. Mr. Schultz? Just a quick question for you guys, I guess this is all the applicants. Uh, what mechanisms do you have in place for checking IDs to not serve well, to underage? Besides themselves, they do have a card reading machine. Um, though I've heard that the card reading machine doesn't always um, you know, cover out-of-state licenses. As well You've seen as, our meetings. Yeah, I heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously he knows the statute doesn't cover you know, a good out-of-state fake ID. Yeah. So, um, do you accept out-of-state IDs? We do with the second IDs. Do you, do you accept if someone showed you an ID over the phone, no. do you accept that? I saw that happen. So you're out of luck. That happen, and they so did okay, not right. accept the ID. He's Madam Chair, you're out of luck then. Well, <laughs> 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 you, you get carded, right. you're out of luck. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't me. I actually carded the woman in front of me in the line because she looked too young to purchase. Oh. <laughs> Hard to believe. Yeah, all right. All right. Any other questions of the members? That's good to see that you have those systems in place, even if it is a reader. It's not foolproof. Mm -hmm. So you have to be on your toes. Right. So since it's a public hearing, I'm going to invite anyone who's here in the audience to speak in favor, to come forward, seeing none and hearing none. Anyone who wants to speak in opposition to the license transfer, seeing none and hearing none. Um, do we have a... Motion. We do, Madam Chair. I move to approve the change of officers and directors for the package store wine and malt beverage license for Smokes and Snacks Incorporated, DBA Route 28, Lucky Mart, 202 North Street. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Oh, there's oh. also a change, change of manager. Change. Oh, you're going to read the second. For the package Sorry. store, wine and malt beverage license for smoke and snacks, 202 North Street, from Sonal Patel to Vimal and Patel. That's what I seconded. That's <laughs> right, yes. Okay, so on the completely red motion, we have a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank Good luck, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Do well. Check and the record, you want to close signing. We're signing. Oh, yeah. okay. I, well, sorry, I closed that portion of the hearing. I thought I said that. But you may have. I mean, we may have missed. It, thank you, Madam Chair. Nobody was here to <laughs> talk to us about it. So. Okay.
So our next order of business looks like we have quite a few licenses. Quite a few. Madam Chair, just by way of very brief explanation, um, we're in a unique situation where we're only having one uh, meeting here in the month of December. So we've really done our best to give the board a complete packet. Um, if you were to look in the share file folder, there is a separate file called motions. I think it says there's a dash two for the renewals. So they, they were all put in there this afternoon. Um, we've got it down to, I believe, six or seven establishments that are ready for a clean renewal. And then at the last motion is for a, <clears throat> a renewal for those six or seven establishments, which basically ask the board to approve the renewal, but authorize that the licenses be held in my office until there's compliance with the uh, issues that are outstanding. And I can talk further about those when we get to that motion. It's the last one. Um, for the new board members, what basically happens is there are a series of motions and they will be accompanied by a series of um, licenses that you'll need to affix your, your signature to after the vote. Um, I think most of them are in front of you, Leanne, there at this point um, mm -hmm. in a folder. Um, so there is a lot of paperwork that needs to be signed. And so we're going to just have a signing party after the meeting? It's the board pleasure at times that we've tried to sign on an ongoing basis. Just pass them Keep around. Going. Yep. We, do. We, yes. we basically try to reassemble them, you know, at the end. So. Walk and chew gum, folks. Yep. Thank you, All Madam right. Chair. All right. Okay. So, but for purposes of the votes, we're independently. This is where you need a rubber stamp. We're, yeah. we're independently <laughs> approving of these renewals. Okay. We're ready. Oh, no, we're not. We have one vote. All right. Go ahead. <clears throat> I'll take a deep breath. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following common picture licenses to expire December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Andrea's House of Pizza, Beyond Bagels, China Cuisine, Dairy Queen of North Reading, Dos Lobos, Dunkin' Donuts, Whole Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts, North Reading, Maine, Dunkin' Donuts, Shauna Donuts, Ginger Gourmet Restaurant, Horseshoe Cafe Incorporated, J Mac Incorporated, DBA Subway, Joe Fish, Kitty's Restaurant and Lounge, McDonald's Restaurant, Molly Store Incorporated, DBA Ryer Store, Nan Center Cafe, Papa Gino's, Sports Spirits and Steaks, Starbucks Coffee, Sawar, Swaran, Swaranch, I was doing so good, LLC, DBA Subway, The Hornet's Nest, The Lobster Claw, and Wendy's. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All, the, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. There are several. So, um, several categories of motions. Categories all lumped into one on our agenda. I, see. Okay. I was trying to check off as you were going along, but you went so fast I may have missed them. So. <laughs> so. So I will move to uh, common victualler of alcohol. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following common victualler all alcohol license to expire December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. China Cuisine, Dos Lobos, JR Crystal Incorporated, DBA Ginger Gourmet Restaurant, Push to Cafe Incorporated, Joe Fish, Kitty's Restaurant and Lounge, Sports Spirits and Steaks. Second. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following Class 1 licenses to expire January 1st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. <coughs> Bobcat, Brian Dushak, DBA National Sales, Melconian Subaru, North Reading Motorsports. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Madam Chair, I'd like the record to show that I will be abstaining for any uh, motions in relation to class one and class two uh, licenses uh, because I have a family member that holds a class two license in the town and want to uh, avoid
avoid any appearance of conflict of interest, so I will be abstaining on Class 1 and Class 2 licenses. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. All right, so any other discussion? On the motion, all those in favor? Oh, wait a minute. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I have a motion. I didn't have a second. second. Oh. Mr. Yeah, Schultz. Good second. Who's seconded it? We had a second. Yep. Oh, I'm, I didn't hear. Okay, I'm, I apologize. You were in conference. All right. Mr. Schultz, all those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. So we have four in favor, one Abstention. abstaining. Thank you. So, M Mr. O'Leary, you and members of the board, you, I was puzzled because I realized I have a daughter that works at two of the establishments who are up for license renewal. So <coughs> if the members would please recall that vote so that I can abstain. Is it the <laughs> common victual or all alcohol or the uh, one before or both? Uh, I only checked off, as I was going along, I only checked it off the I common victual. Do we have a conflict? I mean, you don't have a financial interest in these right no, now. No, and I, I mean, she's I don't think an employee, but yeah. nevertheless, if, if that's... Would you like to withdraw your vote on those three notes? I would, Mr. Gill, just to avoid any appearance of... This is on the common victual's license? The, well, it was one of each. Common victual and also the alcohol common She's victual. a hard worker. She has two jobs. Yeah. That's good. Um, yes, one is a one is an all all alcohol. All right, so Madam Chair, I move to uh, reconsider uh, license renewals, common vitular uh, licenses. And I I'm going to abstain because I have a, a no. But this is to reconsider. Okay, thank you. Okay, so on that basis, I'm sorry, Good time. members, but yes, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, thanks, Ms. Gonzalez. All those in favor. Uh, and likewise, Madam no, Chair. No, no, don't, no, Madam Chair. Uh, <laughs> I move to um, renew the following common vigilance licenses to expire December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory departments as previously read. Okay, and I'm going to I'll alert the members. I have a, I'm going to abstain because I have a child that works at one of the, one of the facilities. So, Do it, did I need to second that? Sure. Second this. So second by Mrs. Gonzalez. All and those the chair will call for a, uh, vice chair will call for a vote. You, All Mr. those in Larry. favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed and abstaining. And, and I'm abstaining. And yes. abstaining. So and four, then, 401, Madam Chair, I move to reconsider the common vitula all alcohol um, license previously taken. So sorry. See, we've been doing good on time. I was just That's moving okay. along. Can't have that. Oh. So the motion. <laughs> <laughs> and Mrs. I'm, Gonzalez I'm second. I second. And Mrs. I'm second. abstaining because I have a daughter. Look same, at this huge crowd that's got these empty seats here. The same child that works at another one. <laughs> all right. So uh, now on the motion to uh, reconsider, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, one abstention. Thank you. All right. Now on the motion, uh, the Madam Chair, I'll make a uh, motion to renew the following common vigilant all alcohol licenses to expire December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory. Department requirements, China Cuisine, Dos Lobos, uh, Junior Crystal DBA, Ginger Gourmet, Horseshoe Cafe, Joe Fish, Kitty's Restaurant Lounge, Sports Spirits and Steaks. Seconded by Mrs. Gonzalez. And I abstain from that. And the chair has notified us that she will be abstaining because she has a uh, child who works for one of the establishments. Uh, so on the main motion as presented, all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed, abstain. one abstention. 401 I didn't hear anything. Are you done thank now? You're back on. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Thank Chair. you, members. Jane, if you have any problems, let me know. Oh, okay. we have another problem. We have another problem. <laughs> and likewise, on the, we have the class two license coming up. I'm going to abstain with respect to Route 28 Motors because they are a past client of mine. Okay. Thank you. But I will vote on the other three. All right. So oh. just separate the motion. Yeah, just Break the motion. Them I can just abstain from the whole thing, too. Probably I shouldn't vote on any of them if I have a client in that bucket. I'll just abstain from the motion. What did you say? I'm abstaining from this. <laughs> because, we, because we've listed them all together on the motion. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> Poor Jane's head's going to explode in about oh three seconds. <laughs> Keep it simple. All right. Madam Chair, <laughs> I move to renew the following Class 2 licenses to expire January 1st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. A&J Auto, 
Ryan Dushak, DBA National Sales, Nika Incorporated, DBA Route 28 Motors, P&T Auto Sales. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Waller. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. With two abstaining. Abstaining and abstaining. Two abstentions. Yeah. <coughs> What if three of us have this thing? Huh? What if three of us? The rule of necessity would kick in. So, yeah, 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 yeah. so that was Mr. O'Leary and, and Mr. Schultz. Mr. Schultz. <coughs> three O. Oh, I keep doing that. Yep. Okay. Just for just for the new members' uh, information, Class One auto license automatically gets a Class Two. You know, so Class One is is new. Class Two is used, and oh. Class Three is basically uh, junk. junk. Okay. Right. So class one license already all automatically gets a class two license. So okay. That's why I abstained on the class one and class and, two. But you can go with the junk. But I can go with the junk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're all back for the junk. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following class three license to expire January 1st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Brian Dushak, DBA National Sales. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Again, this is just for the uh, new members' uh, informational purposes. Uh, Mr. Dushak operates his business out of his home, so there are no junk cars on premises, some of his class two and same of his class one. So we've been reluctant over the years to have a junkyard yeah. you know, in North Reading. So. Uh, when he came and applied for the class two and the class one, one, two, and three, he basically just deals online and brokers deals as opposed to housing vehicles okay. uh, in his, on his premises. So. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following automatic amusement device licenses to expire December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Andrea's House of Pizza, Kitty's Restaurant and Lounge, Loyal Order of Moose, Papagino, Sports Spirits and Steaks. Second. I have a motion. And a second. Second. Um, second by Mr. Schultz. Well, Mr. Schultz. <laughs> and he just oh, did he say it? Did he say second? <laughs> and he just further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, Mr. T, do we have to renew T's or does that just start? For their automatic amusement license? Yeah. It's, it's, it's covered under the, uh, the, the last motion, which is one motion okay. with outstanding issues. But yes, I asked the same exactly. question. It's so that would come back to us. Again. It is in there. <coughs> and the billiard license is on a different schedule. I believe it is in April. Okay. May or April. Yeah. And does not require a hearing. Right. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following fraternal club all alcohol license to expire December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Loyal order of moves. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to renew the following package store all al alcohol licenses to expire December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Eastgate Liquors, New England Beverage and Redemption, One Stop Liquors. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further? Oh, it's O'Leary. See. Yeah. Mr. O'Leary, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following package store wine and malt beverage licenses to expire December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Christopher's Market, Convenience Plus, Molly's Store, DBA Ryer Store, Smokes and Snacks Incorporated, DBA Route 28, Lucky Mark. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Waller. Any further <coughs> discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Madam Chair, I move to renew the following jukebox license to expire December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Loyal order of moves. Second. Motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to renew the following li livery license to expire December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements, Metro Town Car. Second. Motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to renew the following Sunday Entertainment's license to expire December 31st, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements, sports, spirits, and stakes. Second. Motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following licenses and that they be held in the office of the town administrator until the licensees have met satisfactory compliance of all issues with the departments listed. Captain, do I read that whole thing? Captain Pizza, Common Victular, Health Department, Kawabungas, Automatic amusement devices, health building. Heavenly Donuts, Common Victular, health. Group One Hillview, Common Victular, Common Victular All Alcohol, Sunday Entertainment, Admin Fire Building. Mario's Restaurant, Tay, Common Victular, Common Victular Wine and Malt, Finance. Speedway, Package Store Wine and Malts, Police Fingerprint. Teresa's Prime, Common Victualer, Common Victualer All Alcohol, Sunday Entertainment, Automatic Amusement Device, Health Finance. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Schultz and members of the board. I'm going to abstain from a vote because I have a family member who's employed at one of those establishments. So. Do I have a, any discussion or input, Mr. Gilberto, regarding that particular vote, please? Sure. So do, what we've done here is we've conditioned the renewal that there be uh, compliance with specific, specific departments for which there are outstanding issues. Um, you know, I believe that in most of these cases, if not all these cases, there is an opportunity to cure these issues before the license would need to be issued on December 31st. I think many of these establishments are making progress towards compliance. Um, which is certainly encouraging, um, but we've you know, basically structured it as we have in the past to allow that the board can take its action to renew, um, but that the license would be held. So if the compliance hasn't been addressed or a path to compliance <coughs> hasn't been agreed to between the regulatory department and the establishment, come January 1st, they would not be able to operate for the purpose that's identified in the particular license. Um, knock on wood, we have not had that come to pass, uh, at least in my time here, in approving these, um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that that will be the case um, this year as well. Um, but nonetheless, we do request that the board vote as, as the motion reads. All right. Thank you, Mr. Delberto. So I have Ms. Ms. Gonzalez. Will we, uh, will we sign them? You will, yes. and we will hold them and not issue them until okay. the issues are resolved. Okay. So. I should say you're asked to. <laughs> yeah, I should say you will. You, you're asked to. <laughs> you will. <laughs> you must. <laughs> You're not leaving until. <laughs> so I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And one and abstain. Licensees who failed to renew for 2020. 
North Reading Christopher Club Incorporated. Yes. So after the renewal occurs, we are required to report to the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission uh, those who have not renewed for licenses. So that, that's a separate vote with a form that I believe is in the package on the side as well. So we'd ask the board to take that vote as well. Uh, vote to sign. No one's ready. We, didn't we all sign. Okay. We don't, so it's, the, the, the motion would be to vote to, vote to sign um, the report to the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission. So does this mean they won't provide, provide an opportunity to renew? I mean, what if they get it in this week? Thank These are voluntary non-renewals. So the Knights of Columbus is not renewing. And the other establishment that's on there, I'm sorry. That's the only one listed on. Yeah, this. so they've, they've, they're have they going through a transition for the use of their property, and, they, and they've and they notified us maybe six weeks ago that they were not intending to renew. Okay. So that was anticipated. Okay. We did have uh, one other um, notable non-renewal. It was not an alcoholic beverage uh, license, but uh, Mike's Pizza and Roast Beef, which uh, did not apply to me. Mr. Schultz. Um, speaking of that, I know you've been in the news. The owner has just been sentenced for tax evasion for that property, which means the town has owed a lot of money in back meal tax. What, what is being done for the town to recoup that money? Is there anything in tandem with the state and the federal uh, prosecution on that? Uh, so I, I would just note before, um, you know, commenting further that I have filed a, a disclosure with the select board that uh, I do have an interaction um, with the, the family that I'm not going to elaborate on. Um, but I have disclosed with the select board uh, that uh, you know, there is a relationship through youth, uh, youth activity. Um, but that being said, um, we are working with town council and uh, have had some initial conversation with the Department of Revenue with regard to that issue. Um, I can tell you that it's uh, something that the State Department of Revenue is aware of. That's where our portion of the state meals tax passes through to come to the town. Uh, and we can expect um, that there, there would be a sort of catch up with regard to what we might be owed, but it's probably some number of months away before it will occur. Okay. But they are aware uh, of the issue. They're standing in our shoes, essentially. Uh, effectively, we have no direct access to them. Um, and I, you know, I would also note that the issues that you're talking about, Mr. Schultz, relate to tax years through 2015. There are three, almost three other tax years for which uh, you know, there, there, there may be questions. Right. Thank you. I, sh I should also note, um, since uh, it may be out there, that uh, the establishment was visited by the, um, the health director uh, today and was uh, issued a, uh, a, a suspension notice with a hearing date scheduled for January. So um, yeah, that's uh, not directly related to the issues that have been identified here in this discussion. It is more related to um, um, health and safety related issues. But uh, for those who may have seen that notice, uh, that's, the, that's the background on that. Thank you. Okay, so I have a motion. Would I do I have a second on that motion to sign that? Second. Oh, Mr. Holieri. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So Madam Chair, in accordance with the Chapter 121 of the Acts of 2016 and MGL C666, a I move to appoint Donald Statz as Records Access Officer for the Town of North Reading Fire Department for a term to run concurrently with his employment as Fire Chief. Okay, so we're moving on to the next order of business, which is uh, appointments. All right, so I have a motion. Do I have a second to that motion? Second. Second. A uh, second by Mr. Walner. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you have the, st the um, state ethics liaison and town treasurer too? Yes. You want them in an order? Yeah, you might. Yes. Madam Chair, I move to reappoint Barbara Statz as the State Ethics Commission liaison for a term to expire on December 31st, 2020. Okay, motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 
unanimous. Post discussion. She does a good job of chasing me down every year. Uh, mm -hmm. I tell you. Madam Chair, I move to reappoint Marianne McKay as town treasurer for a term to expire on December 31st, 2020. Second. Okay. Motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to place and nomination the following names for appointment as member of the Commission on Disabilities for terms to expire December 31st, 2022. Gloria Mastro, Elizabeth Coolidge Stoltz. Second. Motion and a second, and we'll hear from the liaison, Mr. Walner. I don't know what to say. Oh. Do you, do you have any recommendations for us? No, Gloria is a great <laughs> choice. Yes. Okay, sorry. Gloria would be a great choice. And this is one of two? Two of two, right, Mr. Yeah, and, and Ms. Cool Elizabeth Stoltz. Coolidge Stoltz. No. Who's been on a lot of our meetings? Yes, she yes. Has. Into the wee hours I of the miss night. her tonight. Actually, she's not here tonight. I know. You know. The one time she's <laughs> part of it. <laughs> so it's two, two <laughs> nominations yeah. placed and two, uh, for two positions, mm -hmm. right? And this is a roll call vote. For Ms. Mastro and Ms. So, Ms. Yeah. Coolidge Stoltz. Ms. Ms. Any further discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Did we have a second, by the way? Sure, second it. Yeah. Second by Mr. O'Leary. I didn't. Um, it doesn't say, but that's okay. It's two. Is it two? It's two, two individuals nominated for two posts. So this is an easy vote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. O'Leary. Gloria Mastro and Elizabeth Coolidge Stoltz. Mr. Walner. Elizabeth Mastro and Elizabeth Mastro. Gloria. Gloria Mastro. What did you say? Gloria. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Coolidge Stoltz. Oh, I didn't see this. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Elizabeth Coolidge Stoltz. All right. Mr. <laughs> Sorry. Mr. Mr. Schultz. Ms. Mastro and Ms. Coolidge Stoltz. Ms. Gonzalez. Gloria Mastro and Elizabeth Coolidge Stoltz. Yeah. Okay. And Gloria Mastro and Elizabeth Coolidge Stoltz. Sorry, Mr. Wong. We typically we, we typically hear from the liaison in, in terms I, of making the recommendations. I didn't realize. That's, I was, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. This has been very it's two confusing. for two, so that's an that's that's the next one that you I'm recommended both. On. That's all. Yeah. All right, Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following names for reappointment appointment as members of the Historical Commission for terms to expire on December 31st, 2022. Two openings. Um, Dana Rowe, incumbent. Douglas Doty, James Cheney, and Chris Lippert. Mr. Gilberto? Second. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, you're right. Mr. O'Leary seconded that motion. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. So um, in, there's a misprint in the, um, in the motion the body of the motion, it should say members of the Forest Committee and not the Historical Commission. Oh, okay. So, um, Forest Committee. That's what I seconded. So, <laughs> I thought so. I thought so, yeah. So, Ms. Okay, so the Mr. Forest Walner, through the tree. Mr. Walner, you're up on that one too, as a liaison. I definitely recommend Dana Rowe, and I don't have any opinion about the other three. If anybody has any input on that, I'd appreciate it. I, again, again, I've known Doug Doty for, uh, for a number of years. He's been uh, intimately involved with uh, a lot of uh, say environmental issues in the town, and uh, I think he'd be a good um, addition to the Forest Committee. Any other, other members? Again, have any not input? to detract from Mr. Cheney and Mr. Lippert, because I appreciate them stepping forward, and I think it's important for. Uh, uh, applicants to understand, you know, we only have so many positions to fill. It's not like someone beat someone else out. You know, we want to uh, to have continued interest in, in serving the community, and again, we only have so many positions to fill. And uh, don't be disappointed if you don't get it this time, because chances are you'll there'll be a vacancy, and we'll give it to you the next time. Yep. Mr. O Schultz, Mr. Schultz, my Irish now. <laughs> the German Irish guy. Um, 
I don't know any of the four people here, but I just want to take a minute to thank everybody who has applied for these positions. I think it's great when the town we put out the bat signal on social media asking people to apply for these positions, and we did get a number of applicants in. And I just want to say thank you. That's great. And uh, as Mr. O'Leary said, you know, there's not room for everybody on everything, but there's room for everybody on something. I guess the best way I could put it. Thank you to the town's folks who have stepped up and put their name out there and threw their hat in the ring. Okay, this is a roll call vote for a roll call <coughs> vote. Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Rowe and Mr. Doty. Mr. Walner. Mr. Rowe and Mr. Doty. Mr. Schultz. Mr. Rowe and Mr. Doty. Ms. Gonzalez. Mr. Rowe and Mr. Doty. And I'll vote Mr. Rowe and Mr. Cheney. Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following name for reappointment as member of the Historical Commission for a term to expire on December 31st, 2022. There are two openings. There's only one name, Stone Jay-Z, who is an incumbent. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Second. Motion and a second. I and recommend Stone Jay-Z. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call Excellent name choice. Mr. O'Leary. Stone JC. Mr. Walner. Stone JC. Mr. Schultz. Stone JC. Ms. Gonzalez. Stone JC. And Stone JC. Maybe we can get one of those nominees for the Forest Committee to jump over to fill the other. Hmm. Would fill the other post on the Historic Commission. It'd be nice to get a full committee there. Yeah. Two different, two different responsibilities, yeah. but. It's all like Martin, good for the town. Martin's pond looks a little thin too, so it'd be nice to get somebody over there. Mm -hmm. right. Speaking of which, Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following names for reappointment. Appointment as member of the Martin's Pond Committee for terms to expire on December 31st, 2022. There are five openings. We have two names. Lawrence Soucy, incumbent. James Greer. I recommend each of them. You second that first. <laughs> oh, sorry. Second. I, second. A, I'll second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Walner, who wants to recommend Lawrence Sosi and James Greer. It's a roll call name vote. Mr. O'Leary. Lawrence Sosi, James Greer. Mr. Walner. Uh, Lawrence Sosi and James Greer. Mr. Schultz. Lawrence Sosi and James Greer. Ms. Gonzalez. Lawrence Sosi and James Greer. Lawrence, Susie, and James Greener. May I just comment on the people who have resigned from their posts? They have been dedicated, Janet Okoja, Lori Lyons, and Catherine Scanelli. They have been dedicated for probably 20, 25 years to working on the Martins Pond, and they've had huge success doing the um, Oktoberfest that led to the park that we have, which is a wonderful park now. I remember back in the 90s, doing trash pickup in the neighborhood that was originally organized by these people. So they've been really dedicated stewards of taking care of our area, and we're gonna miss them sorely. But I'm glad Larry continues on, especially he's been part of that group and has been doing a good job, so we own the lot. Thank you, Mr. Walmart. Yeah, I, I tell you, that just to echo the comments and add to it, I mean, the work that's been done by these people and the grant money, collaboration with Merrimack College, um, Again, the uh, progress that's been made as far as uh, you know, cleaning up Martin's Pond, addressing Martin's Pond, keeping it visible in the public eye has been huge. And again, it's a tremendous asset to the community, uh, and these people have dedicated a significant number of hours and years uh, to highlighting it and keeping, it, uh, keeping us focused on it. And uh, I hope we get some more committed people to uh, continue their work but uh, to them thank you very much and it's greatly appreciated yep. okay thank you moving on
Sorry. Uh, we do. Who's the incumbent? It's uh, James Small. It's it's written in there for reappointment. Oh, I'm sorry. J Jason Small. Yeah, excuse me. Got it. James. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to reappoint Jason Small as the Reading Municipal Light Department Advisory Board Representative for a term to expire December 31st, 2022. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Schultz. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Chair, I move to reappoint the following individuals to the Taxation Aid Committee for terms to expire December 31st, 2022. Debbie Carboni, Assessor, Marianne McKay, Treasurer. Second. So, a motion and a, um, excuse me, a motion. And a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Mr. Walling, you're recommending. <laughs> Both, right? All I'm right. Sure am. Two for two. It's a roll call. Oh, yes. Deb, Deb, Deborah Carboni and Marianne. Yeah, it's just a, a vote. All right. Oh, it's vote. just a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are we going to just jump a little bit out of order, folks, and go to the TA's report? <laughs> thank you. I was watching on TV. <laughs> thank, yeah. thank you. You're the one. Thank you. I was watching. I was watching. Yeah. You're one of two. You can go home. Oh, jeez. <laughs> thank you, Madam yeah. Chair. Um, with Hallmark. <laughs> where Mr. Hertz has taken the, the, the time to come to the meeting, I thought it might be uh, appropriate to take this out of order. So one of the items that's in the TA report that I would be reading at, normally reading at the end of the meeting uh, is a reference to the ongoing work of the bike trail feasibility study, which Mr. Hertz has basically single-handedly undertaken at this point. Um, so I'm just going to read um, from what, uh, what the update is, which is that the feasibility study their consultant, BSC Group, uh, will be contacting property owners that either abut or may be impacted directly by a potential uh, trail route segment here in town. And I attached a copy of a draft letter that they'll be sending out, I think, as soon as this week to a, a list of recipients, which I also included as well. Um, an informational meeting on this may be scheduled at a later point in time with them, but basically the idea is to approach these individuals and get a sense of what their thoughts are and how interested or open they may or may not be, maybe even a better understanding of some of the physical challenges for the parcels. Um, some of the parcels are immediately adjacent to the Riverwood property, the former Smith property as well, which we've had some initial conversation about how to approach those. Um, but um, the rest of the properties um, are sort of outside that buffer. And I think, Phil, you want to add anything with regard to where things stand or maybe just a general update on the project? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're moving along. We, we have a, a primary route. Um, uh, the, 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 the most complicated area is right by Riverwoods, um, is how do you get across Park Street. Um, and uh, to follow the rail line closely would make the trail go within 30, 20, 30 feet of a couple of houses. So it's still possible those property owners might give an easement, but it would go, it, it would go close to their homes, so they might, they might object. The, the route that would pass furthest from the homes would be to work something out with the, the people that are abut the Riverwood area, um, particularly the, the Smiths, primarily the Linda Smith, her property. Um, and the idea would be to try to get access back to that property and be able to, for people to, to use it, um, which logically would, there'd be, there are two routes into that property. Um, one is via the bridges that connect up to uh, Route 62 Elm Street, and one would be Wright Street. Um, and ideally, we could get some sort of easements to run a, a right of way from the land to Wright Street so people could get to it right from, from Wright Street. Um, on the bridges, BSC, when the, we walked the area, they said that those two bridges would most likely qualify for state funding for rebuilding under a small bridges program. Um, 
and that uh, they would be brought up to code for large trucks, fire trucks, or for that matter, Linda Smith's vehicles. So it, it might be an interesting compromise to, um, the town would need to have title to those bridges. It couldn't be just an easement for the, for the state to give funding for those bridges. The state would need bridges. And, I, and, and uh, Mike's going to schedule some time with the town council where we, can, where we can talk about this in more detail. But I think this is, we've got an opportunity with the trail um, to use the, the, the consultants and to think about maybe finally having a way of getting in there. Um, uh, figure out where parking might be and how we might access it. So then if the trail ran that way, it would, the, 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 the rail trail itself is, to the, is uh, on the southern end of uh, Riverwood. You'd run the trail through, through, the, through the park, through the Riverwood area, and it would connect into Wright Street, and the trail would run down Wright Street and then cross 62 right at my property, just coincidentally, um, and uh, go across 62 there. And it would pass not near any homes. Uh, we, wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't widen White Wright Street. It would run on Wright Street. Maybe the speed limit would, would, would go down a bit, which I think the people on Wright Street would like. Um, it would become, people walk on the street now, and it might be a very good compromise. But that's, that's the trickiest part of the whole, the whole trail. Um, there is the other tricky part is getting from Haverhill Street into Ipswich River Park. Um, the, the rail bed itself runs through uh, North Reading Auto Body. Um, there, it's not as hard as where the, the Riverwood is. There are possibilities of running it in the wetland um, right along the river, it would be more complicated. It would be a lot easier if we could, if, if, if we could secure an easement uh, on his property, but uh, there, are, there are ways around it there. Um, beyond that, they, they've, uh, they've come up with some, some good solutions um, to get, to, to run the trail out to, out to, 20, out to Route 28, um, you know, potentially connecting to whatever you do with that, that area um, right. by Ocean State job lots. Um, and I heard you talking earlier about the potential um, waste treatment plant, and I don't know. If, I don't know if that's still in the mix. That that yes. that, that there may be um, a way of combining the work on the rail trail with the with the uh, digging up of the of the area there for the for the waste treatment plant. The rail trail would essentially run right on top of the waste treatment uh, uh, pipe. Um, which might be an efficient use of the of, of resources. So, M Madam Chair, there really wasn't a need for any action on the board's part. We just wanted the board and the community to be aware these conversations will be taking place. These residents will be contacted um, to further explore the feasibility of the route. And when the timing is appropriate, there'll be a larger informational meeting. So, really, that was all. And like I said, we'll be in touch with regard to a conversation with town council. Okay, Mr. Schultz. on public say, Mr. Hertz. I've worked with you for a while on this. And you've isolated. <laughs> I mean, I've come in here with this room with you, and you've laid out map after map on these tables. And we have you, more now. <laughs> you've done, I just want to say publicly, and thank you, you've done, I don't know how many hundreds of hours you put into this. Yeah. And when I say, when Michael says you basically have been the driving force, you have been. And we just, I thank you. That's well, I, and I appreciate your, your support, too. Um, we, we wouldn't have it, and, and, and if we can get through this, then, then there's, a bigger, there's a bigger question that'll come to the town, you know, at the end of this. So, see. thank you. Just to say, I mean, You've had our support, previous board, and, and town meeting support, more importantly. Right, right. You know, more importantly, we've had town meeting support to come up with the initial funds to, to do this study, hire the consultant, and uh, that's been key. It's been, uh, but again, you have been the driving force, and it's greatly appreciated, <laughs> and keep going, please, because... Yeah. No, I, 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 that, it's great. It's, it's I, fun, I, and... It's, it's going to be a tremendous asset. It's an exciting... It would be an exciting addition to the town, yeah. The... Uh, uh, Daniel McKnight, her, the, the open space and recreation uh, uh, activity. I'm, I'm on that board too, and they did a whole series of questions in this in this room a week or so ago. Mm -hmm. And and the trail and having more access to trails was is number one yes. on what's coming out of out of that project too. So yes. uh, I think it, it fits. The timing's right. Yeah, we appreciate nice. it. Thank All you. right, I'll, just, I'll just be back. Add, can I just add to oh, it? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Way Warren. back when Phil and I. We originally talk about this <laughs> Phil took me for a ride on the trails and it's a hidden secret that people just don't even know about and when you go on the trails it's really
quite amazing how good this is and how if we connect the dots and get through a few of these properties, what a great amenity it will be for the town. Oh, be, I yeah. mean, it's just outstanding. So. And Linfield's coming along. There, there were problems with the water district in Linfield where they didn't want anybody on the land. But Linfield has they've turned over the, the, the management of that water district. And I, I think by the time we're, we're ready, I don't think there'd be, there's going to be much problem in connecting into the Linfield land and into which Middleton. Was a, which was a hurdle also. Which right, means right. you could connect to Newburyport. We could connect Newburyport and, and we like could. Like that whole amazing. bike trail is all connected. Oh, he, That's amazing. Newburyport, we, we would connect into eventually into the one that Linfield's building that would head toward, down towards Boston. It, it'll go all the way to Salem. Um, they're building a bridge over Route 1. Peabody's building a bridge over Route 1. Um, so, you know, you, you know, 10 years from now, this will be quite something. We won't need cars anymore. <laughs> 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 the, the, fittest, the fittest town in the area. <laughs> It's, I know you it, always give people your number to say, call me and I'll, you know. I, I think once, the, once this is done, um, that'll be logical. I think right now it's a little sensitive because we have to get out there and tell the abutters. Um, I mean, we've got to figure out how do we approach Linda Smith. I mean, if, if we can't figure out how to get it across Park Street, we have a, we have a you know, you can't, you lose a third of the trail. You lose all the connectivity. So I think once we have a, a pretty good direction and know how that'll work, then, then yeah, we have to put it all out there and everybody has to see it. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Nice to see you. Wise of you coming in early. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> you saw a break. Yeah. Well, I, waited, I waited for you to get through all of the, the, the licenses. <laughs> yeah, smart. <laughs> and you rode your bike here, right? <laughs> so Merry Christmas. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You want to pick this up? Well, uh, oh, sure. Sure. Madam Chair, I move the place and nomination of following names for reappointment as process serving constables. Terms expire on December 31, 2020. There's five openings. We have three uh, incumbents, and that's it. John Fiorello, Douglas Lab, and David Rosati. Second. Uh, okay, well, I have a motion and a second, and our liaison just stepped out, so we're just going to assume she's going to recommend the three for five. <laughs> right? Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Fiorello, Mr. Lab, and uh, Mr. Rosati. Mr. Walner. Mr. Fiorello, Mr. Lab, and Mr. Rosati. Mr. Schultz. Mr. Schultz. Mr. Fiorello, Mr. Lab, and Mr. Rosati. Ms. Gonzalez. Mr. Fiorello, Mr. Lab, and Mr. Rosati. <coughs> Mr. Fiorello, Mr. Lab, and Mr. Rosati. Second by, yes, okay, great. All right, we assumed you as the liaison we're going to recommend those three for the five openings. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. But as far as the two other incumbents, um, they just didn't they reapply? They, yeah, they, they chose not to. Mr. DeRocher and Paul Dorsey? Both declined to, to right. for re reappointment. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following names <coughs> for appointment, reappointment to the library trustees for the following terms. Three openings for a term to expire December 31st, 2022. Catherine Giafran Scannell, who is the incumbent, Janet Murphy, Marco Mesa, Deborah Mahoney, Suresh Rayo, Jennifer Striesel Thompson, and Carrie Antonucci. Uh, as liaison. I'll second. Uh, that's a motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. This is for three openings. There's also a, a term to expire December 31st, 2020. Two. Because of somebody stepping down, that has to be filled. Um, Janet Murphy, Marco Mesa, Deborah Mahoney, Suresh Rayo, Jennifer Streetsel Thompson, and Carrie Antonucci. Um, so, as liaison, I am recommending Catherine Giafrain Scannell is the incumbent and wants to stay. 
um, Janet Murphy, Jennifer Streisel Thompson. So that's three, Ms. Gonzalez. Is the three for terms to expire December 31st, 2022. For the term to expire December 31st, 2020, um, I am recommending Deborah Mahoney. Um, and the board also is. Okay. So, so the chair of the trustees also um, recommends? No, I'm sorry. That is not right. Is that right? Yes, you do. Yes. The first three um, names you are recommending out of the list are for the 2022 term. The fourth <coughs> name is to fill the term that's. That's not right. Can, can I come back to this? Sure. Okay. I have to. So this is the 2020? All right. That's all right. You can. Excuse. Sorry. Brief, brief moment to, to the board. So, but is she serving to both? Is she nominated? No. Okay. Mr. Gilberto? I'm, I'm going to try to assist, although I was not part of the conversation. Yeah. But my, my understanding after um, Mrs. G Mrs. Gonzalez and Ms. Marlin reviewed the records that the intention was to nominate Ms. Jeffrey and Scannell and Ms. Murphy for the term to expire December 31st, 2022, 2022. and that Ms. Streisel Thompson would be nominated for the term to expire December 31st, 2020, Correct. for a total of three appointments. Correct. Two ending in 2022 and one ending in 2020. Thank you. And, and I believe that the intention was to not appoint associate members at this time. Yes. But perhaps in the future. Correct. I'll second the motion. So the recommendation is for Catherine Scannell, Scannell, and Janet Murphy, and, Jenny. and then Jennifer. Thompson for the 2020. <coughs> so we're leaving one vacancy for a full term? No. Uh, this would fill all of all the seats. Vacant, they'll all be filled. We just won't have associates. Right, so Those are the full so terms. There's, so there's two for the 2022 and one right. for, for a year. Correct. For a total She's of three. She's finishing a Correct. term. Okay. Got that? <laughs> no, but you know, it's a name roll call vote. So, any further discussion, <laughs> Mr. O'Leary? Uh, for a term to expire December 31st, 2022, Catherine Jefferson Scannell, Janet Murphy. And for a term to expire December 31st, 2020, Jennifer Streisel Thompson. Correct. For a term to expire December 31st, 2022, Catherine. Scannell, Janet Murphy, and for term to expire December 31st, 2020, Jennifer Streisel Thompson. Mr. Schultz. For a term to expire December 31, 2022, Catherine Jeffrey on Scannell and uh, Janet Murphy. And for the term to expire at 1231-20, that would be Jennifer Streisel Thompson. Ms. Gonzalez. For the term to expire. December 31st, 2022, Catherine Jufren Scannell and Janet Murphy for the term to expire December 31st, 2020, Jennifer Stracel Thompson. Okay. And I'll vote for a term to expire December 31st, 2022, Catherine Scannell and Janet Murphy for a term to expire December 31st, 2020, Jennifer Stracel Thompson. Okay. We got that. These aren't supposed to be <laughs> complicated. They were very complicated. All right. So library trustees are squared away. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. So, so just just as a question. So, as far as associate members, you'll come back later on. Correct. That's good. Yeah. Perfect. Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following names for appointment as members of the Veterans Event Committee. 
for terms to expire December 31st, 2022. Richard Stratton, incumbent, Arthur Cole, incumbent, Michelle Reed, and Daniel Mahoney. Um, Second. I, thank you. I have a motion and a second, and I. I am Liz liaison. Yes. Um, I am recommending Richard Stratton and Arthur Cole would like to continue on. Um, I believe those are the only two, it doesn't say here, but I believe those are the only two openings. Mr. Gilberto? Mr. Gilberto. So we're confirming that right now. Yes, that's correct. Correct. What is correct? Two openings. Two openings, I and here. I am, they would like to stay on, and I am recommending, recommending that. that. All right, so I uh, have any further discussion. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. O'Leary. Richard Stratton, Arthur Cole. Mr. Walner. Richard Stratton, Arthur Cole. Mr. Schultz. Mr. Stratton and Mr. Cole. Ms. Gonzalez. Richard Stratton, Arthur Cole. <clears throat> and I vote Richard Stratton and Arthur Cole. And, uh, how many members are on that committee, Mr. Gilberto? I believe it was reduced to seven from a high of 11, but I'd have to go online to confirm that. We it, recently reduced it, though, within the past two years. So they could meet, have a quorum. Right, they mm -hmm. had a, a challenge with a, a quorum. So, but if, if it was just reduced for that purpose and we have two individuals who want to serve on it, we should take that up at another point sure. and expand the committee with these two new people. Or at least as associate members. And yes. Yeah, because they want to serve on that. I think it's important that, that when people do step forward, we give them a chance, not just the incumbents, but newer people that want to want to start serving on these committees should should have a chance to fulfill the role, especially if there's an expanded capability for membership. Take a minute. This is a, yeah, it's another take a, quick just to one. take a quick, right. quick minute. Quick minute. Stretch your legs. So this is Peter just approached. Confusion in the audience. Do you want the caffeine thing? How about you? Cinnamon cheese. Or cough drops for dinner. Madam Chair, I move to reappoint to the Youth Services Committee the following individuals for the terms noted. Three-year terms to expire December 31st, 2022. Peter Mahane, in incumbent. Samantha Miller, incumbent. Leslie Schultz, incumbent. Christy Damphouse, incumbent. One-year term to expire December 31st, 2020. Frank Ferraro, incumbent, Karen Buscemi, incumbent, and um, Deborah Mahoney um, has been recommended by the board, and I will recommend her myself. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. And then let's hear from the liaison. Oh, Mr. Mr. Schultz. Uh, since one of the candidates also doubles as Mrs. Schultz, I'm going to recuse <laughs> myself from this particular okay. vote. All right. And Kim, we'll, we'll hear from the liaison on recommendation. Oh, I, um, I recommend 
all the incumbents who um, wish to stay and Deborah Mahoney who has been recommended by the board and I will recommend her myself. So where is her name? I'm sorry. So she had she just got added on at the last minute. And which term? Uh, one year term. Deborah Mahoney? 2020? Mm -hmm. 2020. And there's room for everybody? Yes. There was an open seat. Correct. Okay. All right. You need a second? Second. Oh, I thought we had a yeah, second. Yeah, we had a second. That's okay. We had one? So now it's a, a roll right. call. So Mr. O'Leary. Uh, for a three-year term to expire December 31st, 2022, Peter Majane, Samantha Miller, Leslie Schultz, Christy Dampfus. And then for a one-year term to expire December 31st, 2020, Frank Ferraro, Karen Buscemi, and Deborah Mahoney. Mr. Walner. Uh, the three-year term for 2020, uh, 2022, excuse me, Peter Majane, S Samantha Miller, Leslie Schultz, Christy Dempouse, and for the one year term for 2020, Frank Fer Ferraro, Karen Buscemi, Deborah Mahoney. And Ms. Gonzalez. Uh, for the 2022 term, Peter Majane, Samantha, Samantha Miller, Leslie Schultz, Christy Dampouse, one year term. 2020, Frank Ferraro, Karen Buscemi, and Deborah Mahoney. Okay, and I'll vote for the term to expire December 31st, 2022. Peter Mahane, Samantha Miller, Leslie Schultz, and Christy Danfus. And for a term to expire December 31st, 2020, Frank Ferraro, Karen Buscemi, and Deborah Mahoney. Madam Chair, I move to appoint Richard Stratton as member to the Veterans Memorial Committee for an indefinite term. Yes. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second, this is an easy one. This All right, is an easy are you going to recommend? I am, um, yes. Um, <laughs> Mr. Stratton approached me with an interest, and there was an opening, so I, I highly recommend him. Great. Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Stratton. Mr. Waller. Mr. Stratton. Mr. Schultz. Mr. Stratton. Ms. Gonzalez. Mr. Stratton. And Mr. Stratton. She very happy. She texted me. Thank you. <laughs> Are you the youth services liaison? Mm -hmm. No, no. Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following names for appointment, reappointment as member of the Conservation Commission for terms to expire December 31st, 2022. One opening. Melissa Campbell, incumbent. Michael Poole, Chris Lippert, Suresh Rayo, Aaron Matt Daniels, David Doucette, James Cheney, Elizabeth Coolidge Stoltz, John Lape, and Lauren Bashara. Second. I have a motion and a second, and Mr. O'Leary as the liaison. Um, I would recommend uh, Melissa Campbell. Uh, she was appointed uh, a year or two ago, and again, has, uh, as part of the town administrator's report, you will hear that Melissa has uh, continued her education and certification um, as a member of the Conservation Commission and is serving well, and I would uh, highly recommend uh, Melissa Campbell. Okay, any other discussion? On the roll call name vote, Mr. O'Leary. Melissa Campbell. Mr. Walner. Melissa Campbell. Mr. Schultz. Melissa Campbell. Ms. Gonzalez. Melissa Campbell. And uh, vote Melissa Campbell. Plus it's my maiden name, so I was a fan. What's that? <laughs> it's my maiden name, You're so. Melissa? Campbell. <laughs> Melissa. Interesting name. Again, Melissa. Uh, 
uh, Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following names for appointment reappointment as associate members of the Conservation Commission for terms to expire December 31st, 2022. Three openings. John Lape, incumbent. Lauren Bashara, incumbent. Michael Hool, Chris Lippert, Suresh Rayo, Aaron Matt Daniels, David Doucette, and James Cheney. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. And Mr. O'Leary is a liaison. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would uh, respectfully request that my colleagues uh, only fill two of the openings at this particular point in time. Uh, my recommendation would be the two incumbents as a result of some of the mix up over the last month or so. Um, consultation with the chair of the Conservation Commission. We have been unable to contact everybody who is looking for uh, seeking some appointment as an associate member here. And we'd like that opportunity, so we'll be back at a later date recommending the uh, filling of the third slot. Because okay, we haven't talked to everybody. Ms. Gonzalez, you had your um, hand up. I noticed that Elizabeth Coolidge Stoltz was on the first one, but she's not on the associate. Is there a reason for and that? She will be included on the she as, will. Far as, as far as discussions and okay. contact. Yep. So, um, so that, that's why, again, the, the chair of the Conservation Commission nor myself have been able to contact everybody in the short period of time that we've gotten these citizens' activity reports. Uh, so, we would uh, ask that uh, you leave the one associate slot open at this particular point in time okay. with the intent of filling it shortly. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm in favor of that if we do fill it shortly. We usually go along with the liaison recommendations anyway. Okay. So. Well, if you recall, you know, last year we put the call up because we didn't have anybody and we had a need for, yes. for full membership on the Conservation Commission and we had a bevy of activity, which okay. was terrific. Yes. And then we have a significant amount of interest and we'd like to uh, continue backfilling. Uh, just as a way of information uh, to the board, I would anticipate that we're probably going to have another resignation at the end of January of a current Conservation Commission member at the end of January, so that we will be uh, looking to fill a full membership uh, probably end of January, beginning of February, and then backfilling again another associate member slot. So uh, we have a very active uh, associate membership at this point, which is terrific. So that they step right in and be right up to speed. And so that will actually create a second associate member slot if we promote from within. So it's just an FYI. Okay. So again, I would uh, recommend at this particular point just filling two of the uh, three spots. And my recommendation would be John Lape and uh, Lauren Bashara. Okay, Mr. O'Leary. John Lape, Lauren Bashara. Mr. Walner. John Lape. Lauren Bashar. Mr. Schultz. John Lape, Lauren Bashar. Ms. Gonzalez. John Lape, Lauren Bashara. Yeah, I'll vote John Lape and Lauren Bashara. Thank you. Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following names for reappointment appointment to the Hillview Commission for a term to expire on December 31st, 2022. Two openings. Peter Hem. Incumbent, Daniel Doherty, incumbent, Daniela Claiborne, David Lee, Chris Lippert, Nicholas Massey, Henry Burke. Forgive me for any mispronunciations here. All right. Second. I have a motion and a second, and we'll hear from the liaison, Mr. Lee, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Madam Chair, I would recommend to my colleagues again, Peter Hemme and Daniel Doherty, both the incumbents of the Hillview Commission. As you are aware, the Hillview Commission uh, is vital in relation to uh, of the success of the operation. Uh, Mr. Hemi is the current treasurer, CPA, and has been lending his expertise for a number of years. Mr. Doherty is in the uh, um, food business and, again, lends a significant amount of uh, expertise uh, to the commission in relation to the ongoing operations uh, there, and I think it uh, would be incumbent upon us to reappoint the incumbents, Mr. Hemi and Mr. Doherty. Incumbent to the incumbents? It's incumbent upon us to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have a motion and I have a second. And Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Hemi and Mr. Doherty. Mr. Walner. Peter Hemi and Daniel Doherty. Mr. Schultz. Uh, Mr. Hemi and Mr. Doherty. Ms. Gonzalez. Peter Hemi, Daniel Doherty. And I'll vote Peter Hemi and Daniel Doherty. Thank you. Oh, man. <coughs> 
Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following names for reappointment appointment as member of the Water Commission for a term to expire December 31st, 2022. Two openings. I'm going to do Amit my best with these names. Amit Subramani, Amit Subramani <laughs> incumbent. Zhu Yang Zhang. Zhu Yang Zhang. So, another so. easy one, but I have both of you listed as our liaison. I actually so. spoke with Mr. Raguchi, who is the chair, and he also indicated that uh, there's a couple of associate positions as well. If anyone out there is interested in joining the Water Commission, they would love to get some more people on here. That's great. All right. We're so recommending both of these gentlemen. <laughs> yes. Okay. Two Low for bitters. two. All right. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, uh, meet Sobrani and uh, Zhuang Zhang. And Mr. Walner. I met Subrami and Yang Zhang. Mr. Schultz. I met Subrami and Zhu Yang Zhang. Ms. Gonzalez. I met Subrami and Zhang Zhang. I met Subramani and Zhu Yang Zhang. And finally, uh, are you sure? We have a few more here. What else, what else do you have? You said finally? I have a vote. I don't have any more. Are we missing any? Okay, appeals. I have a, it should be an 11th page of the motions relative to the Board of Appeals, yep. Is there okay. not a motion there? Is there anything with cultural council? We never, we didn't, we didn't have any other. I, I don't believe that there were any others that were pending for appointment, ready for appointment or reappointment at this point okay. in time. So we're not other than the Board of Appeals. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following names for reappointment appointment as members of the Board of Appeals for terms to expire December 31st, 2022. Two openings. James Dimitri, incumbent. Paul O'Leary, incumbent. Kerry Antonucci. Antonuccio and Bob Green. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Schultz. And we'll hear from Mr. Schultz as liaison. Uh, we have some great candidates here. Mr. Dimitri is a longtime member, current chair, and is handling the 40B hearings right now with the Elm Street property. Mr. O'Leary, another longtime member. We thank him for his service as well. Uh, Mr. Breen, who's uh, eminently qualified, he's an attorney, he owns no commercial property. He's argued appellate cases in the U.S. Appeals District Court, the Supreme Judicial Court, and the Mass Appellate Court. He's litigated in the Superior District and Probate and Housing Courts. And Ms. Antonuccio, who applied as well, I thank you, thank all of you for your applications. And I'm going to nominate Mr. Dimitri and Mr. Breen. Okay. All right. So, on a roll call name vote, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, just as a way of comment, uh, just to... Uh, First of all, I'd like to state that, you know, my brother Paul O'Leary is an incumbent, 28-year veteran of the uh, Board of Appeals. Uh, there is no inherent conflict, only because it's a non-paying position, so that I will be participating. Um, it's uh, somewhat unusual that if there's going to be a, a recommendation of not recommending an incumbent, that there hasn't been any communication, at least there hasn't been any communication with this member of the board uh, from the liaison. Um, Unless there's some uh, compelling reason as to uh, not to reappoint incumbents. I mean, I certainly would uh, recommend and have in the past over the years um, reappointing the incumbents. So I will be supporting Mr. Dimitri and Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary, that's your name, bro, your name vote? Uh, Mr. Dimitri and Mr. O'Leary. All right, Mr. Walner. Can I just understand the difference between the incumbent and the uh from the liaison and between your recommendation and the incumbent, why, why you're... And what was the recommendation of the chair? I spoke with the chair. I didn't ask for his recommendation. I know he has a personal relationship with one of the members on the board. Um, I recommended who I thought was best for the position. So, Madam Chair, again... Uh, There's no lifetime... The, the, I just, I'm sorry, I just interrupt. I, one thing I am concerned about on this board is the, the appearance of the you're being lifetime appointments on these chairs. And I think, frankly, I think these boards should have term limits on them. And I just think Mr. Breen's more qualified. That's all. 
Uh, just uh, generally speaking, our, our policy calls for uh, liaisons to confer with the uh, chair of the uh, various committees, discuss the uh, needs of the committee and uh, candidates that have applied and uh, who would best serve. Uh, so it's unusual if we didn't have a discussion uh, with the chair, with Mr. Dimitri at the time, uh, currently, and ask for his recommendation as to what the, the current needs for the Board of Appeals are. And I had a discussion with him. And did he make a recommendation to you? No, he did not. would be, again, unusual. There's no rule. Yeah, and no, I'm not yeah. familiar with that. Since I've been on yeah. the board, it's, it's only been for the past four years. It's basically you in, you adhere to what the liaison, to, that's how it's been since I've been here. You adhere no, to the what liaison, the liaison. But the liaison generally confers with the chair. You adhere to what the liaison recommends. And it's Based a board appointment, it. so right. it would be up to the board to decide. And it's also five members, so you, you know, that's, you don't necessarily have to go along with the liaison recommendation, but you know that's typically how it's been done since I've been here. But um, but again, the policy calls for the liaisons for reappointment. Again, when it comes to appointments and reappointments, to confer with the chair of the various boards, committees, and commissions to talk about because those are the people who are on a weekly, monthly basis are dealing with the issues that come before them to talk about the needs and the desires and the wants and the talents of the and the abilities of the people who are either serving or look to serve. And to ignore that isn't, isn't right either. Again, you can disagree. But again, there has been times in the past when uh, the liaisons have disagreed with the chair's recommendations. But those recommendations have been shared with the board prior to any vote. And what we're see seeing here tonight is the non-sharing of a recommendation from the chair of a, of a board so that we can make an informed decision rather than just relying on the liaison's recommendations. Again, everything I did tonight, along with everybody else up to this point, has been in consultation with the chair. This is who has been recommended and why. So if we're going to deviate from that. Well, there's no policy that I'm aware of that you're referring to. I don't, let's not, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to get into a bit. Hmm. If we could all just take, everyone have a, so Mr. Walner had a question about yep. what's the difference between incumbent and liaison recommendation. So that's what we're trying to answer. Well, there, I'm not familiar with anyone telling in advance their recommendation other than at the open meeting. Unless it's going to be, again, I've yeah. been sitting here for close to 30 years. Uh, and again, I don't recall ever being surprised by a recommendation of a non-incumbent without being informed first and having a sprung upon us at the last minute. And I had never been informed that there hasn't been consultation between the liaison and the chairman as to what the chairman's recommendations. And I have sat here and seen two different recommendations and the opportunity for the chairman to come and make a presentation to the rest of the members of the board mm -hmm. as to you know, their recommendation versus the liaison's recommendation. And this isn't happening this evening. Well, I don't think it's up to the chair of the board. I think it's a decision of the board to appoint. No, no, no. But in order for all of us, so again, we have liaison assignments because we can't be in all places at all time with all boards, committees, and commissions. But we have a right, as each and every member here has a right, to be informed as to what the recommendation of the chairman of the current chairman of a board, committee, and commission is going to be as far as who's going to be seated on the board, committee, and commission. 99% of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's in concert with the liaison. When there's a conflict, we should know, should be aware, and know what the, the rationale is why. And again, if the board committee and commission chair respectfully disagrees with the liaison, the other members of this board should be informed as to why the board chair would recommend somebody other than what the liaison is, an incumbent in particular. Or if there's a vacancy, why this person as opposed to that person. And, and we're not being afforded that opportunity. Ultimately, so ultimately, Mr. O'Leary, the board votes. I, I did experience this when I first came on the board, and it had actually had to do with youth services. But again, it's a liaison recommendation. So People don't have to agree with me. 
Well, no, I, no. it's not a disagreement. It's, it's, it's a roll call name vote. So, so, Mr. O'Leary, you did take a vote. So, <laughs> I, again, I would recommend it if. But we're, we're somebody, in the middle of a vote, Mr. O'Leary. So well, your vote. Well, was, no, that we were going to comment. I was commenting. You're asking what my vote was going to be. I, you know, I mean, the comment period now. Is there any discussion? This is discussion. My discussion was, uh, again, that this is unusual. And. and somewhat unprecedented. Uh, so my suggestion to my colleagues are, unless and until we get a recommendation from, and again, I don't know what the recommendation is of the Chair of the Board of Appeals right now to this board as to who should be appointed. Unless until we get that, we should hold off on it. And again, get Mr. Dimitri's input so that we can all make an informed decision as to whether or not we should go along with the uh, liaison's recommendation. But. Uh, we did hear from the liaison who did speak with him, but he didn't make but a recommendation. He so. didn't ask him for a recommendation. There's he no rule saying him. I have to. The, la the, the chairman of the ZBA is close friends with one of the members on the board. I don't want to put him in a spot where he's, I, I made a recommendation, people don't have to vote with me. Let's take a vote. That's what we're here for. I, I would say that it would be, again, we have uh, some pretty important things before the Board of Appeals right now, uh, 40B not being the the smallest one, uh, but there are other matters. And again, you have an incumbent here who's got 28 years of experience of uh, and chairing it for most of that period of time, and you're not recommending that individual, and you didn't have the uh, uh, the courtesy for whatever reason to ask the chair to make a recommendation to this board along with your own. Again, and they may be in no. conflict, they may, may be different, but it would be uh, incumbent upon us, again, not just this one here, but I mean, it's anyone. Again, when I gave you my recommendations, I've consulted with the chairs of all my boards, committees, and commissions, and asked them, and happened to be in concert with all of them. Again, in years past, there has been some disagreements, but those disagreements have been presented right up front to the board members to make an informed decision. We haven't been afforded that, that opportunity tonight. You have every information you need to make a vote right now. You've made your no, vote. No, I do not, because I have not heard from Mr. Dimitri. Is it going to change your vote? You're I not going to vote for your brother? <coughs> It has Come nothing on. to do with that. Well, yeah. All right, let's, so let's yeah. bring it to order. Okay, so we have a motion. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Madam Chair, I move to table uh, the appointment of Board of Appeals until we get a recommendation from the Chair of the Board of Appeals. So, but we have a motion and a second on the... Motion to, motion to table prevails at this particular time. If you go to Robert's Rules of Order. Okay, so I have a motion to table until we get a recommendation from the... And a uh, motion on the floor. A motion and a motion on the floor. To nominate, and I motion to table. And is there a second to that motion? I, I just have more discussion, I guess. Um, on well, there's the, a motion to table right now. Is there a second on that? Yeah, we don't... Sorry. Okay, so we have no second. So the motion to table fails. So, Mr. Walner, what's your I, point? I think that we're all in agreement about Jim Dimitri, who is the chair that we should, we should go through the name roll call for that. But I also think that um, whether the chair decides to comment or not, being in a position where I don't know the background of any of these people, and I do give a lot of weight to people who have historically done the job, it doesn't mean that they should be continuing on, because I don't know the dynamics, but I would like to know what the background is of the people who have applied for this, if we're going to be put in that position of having to decide. And so, um, I there would like more background. It's in your meeting packet. Just one at a time, please, please. Ms. So Cohen, I'm, yes. I'm proposing yeah. now we, you know, we affirm Jim Dimitri and that we table the other ones until we understand how Jim feels and that Mr. Dimitri feels and also that, that we also get background information on the, the, the discussion. I don't know if that's even possible, but I think that makes sure, sense. It's possible. Again, we didn't fill the other one. So that's a next one. Excuse, excuse me, one minute. It'll give us a chance to think about it. Sure. Yeah. Mr. Gilberto. <laughs> this will clear up any confusion, right? I, I guess. So I have a text message I received from Mr. Dimitri stating that um, um, he did, that he talked 
that he was was re was recommending Paul O'Leary. That's what he's saying. So I can so, read it. He said uh, no. That that's so. Yeah, that's so we've, we've heard. He said he's recommending. So Paul. this there really is no yeah, need to table, word. obviously, because me. he's he's I told, in. He says he told Mr. He's Schultz watching he's and weighed in. So the chair yeah. is. So, so again, Mr. Dimitri stated to the town administrator that he's, he recommended to the liaison, Mr. O'Leary. Okay. So, but so again. The liaison said he didn't get a recommendation from the chair, which isn't tr isn't true. Is that true? Did he tell you he was recommending Paul O'Leary? No, it didn't come up. He didn't tell you that. I just come answered up. you. So. I didn't ask so, the question. So was, uh, but th did he offer? I, mean, I don't recall that. No, I don't recall that. But we know what his recommendation is, so now we can vote. So he, okay, he, so no, 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 part of the problem here is Mr. Dimitri has just texted the town administrator and said that he had a discussion with our liaison and said that he was recommending Paul O'Leary. Our liaison is saying he didn't have the discussion with the chair and that Mr. Dimitri did not recommend No, I, no, I, I did have not, No, you know true. what? No, no. That's no. not what he said. No. What he he said he didn't. That's he not what I said. He did not ask him for a recommendation. That was pretty clear. He told me Paul so, and himself were seeking reappointment. So that was pretty much the tenor of our conversation. And I complimented him. I always handled the 40B procedure so far. That was the whole gist of our conversation. It was not that long. Okay. So we have. Okay. So now we have a situation that Mr. O'Leary explained where we have the liaison recommendation, which is for Mr. Dimitri and Mr. Bur is it Mr. Mr. Green. Green, and a, di a difference of the chair, obviously assuming he's recommending himself, and Mr. O'Leary. Yep. So, so um, now we don't need to table because we've heard from via text and. I've also received a text from Jim who said that he did talk to Andy two weeks ago and recommended Paul. Just telling you what he just told yeah. me, and you can read what I just he just sent me a text saying this. So, um, and he's tried to call my number too, but I couldn't pick up the phone while I'm in a meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I right. did speak so, with Mr. Dimitri. So, so I, I think I, I think Mr. Walder's suggestion uh, would, would be a good compromise at this point, which is to appoint Mr. Dimitri this evening, and at our next meeting. And Mr. Dimitri come in here and make his case. And Mr. O'Leary wants to come and Mr. Breen wants to come and we can interview the candidates. And since when have we decision. ever done that? Well, since this is the first time that this has occurred, never. Okay. Well, you know, I think we're ready because to have a motion. You know, apparently you, you've decided not to, to circumvent the system the way that it's worked. But Steve, you're out of order. Uh, I'm out of order? You're okay. out of order well, for accusing me of something. All right. Every, I did not do it. Let's, let's yeah. stop. Let's stop this. So I'm not... Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure what your motion is, Mr. Walney. Your motion is to table and appoint. So that's what I think the, I think the motion came across. We've had a motion to table the vote. That motion failed. But now you're, basically asserting a motion to. We to firm Jim. We firm appoint Jim. and table. So. And then yes. What a point. Okay, so, so do I, do we have more so, so I have a motion to appoint and table, I guess is what we'll call that one. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion to appoint and table and a second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? No. No. What do we, what do, what's your vote, Ms. Gonzalez? I said aye. So three well, in favor of appointing. You were, uh, you were favor of appointing and okay, tabling. Okay, I've no? already become confused. Yeah. Yeah. Can we repeat that whole? Can oh, because you're that? writing it down. Yeah, yeah I was trying motion. to write the motion down. Mr. To Walner appoint, made a motion to, to appoint Mr. Dimitri. Appoint one position, the current chair, and, and to table. table the appointment of the second open position. For reconsideration in the future when we have more information. For our next meeting. Because um, there's, there's disagreement between the liaison and the chair, even about the circumstances that have occurred. So I'm hearing. Okay. 
So Mr. O'Leary seconded that motion. So Mr. O'Leary and Mr. Walner voted in favor of the motion to split the vote, table and vote. And Mr. Schultz and I voted against that vote. Mm -hmm. So you're the only one left. <laughs> I don't know what you voted. I couldn't hear you. I, I didn't. I, I was writing, so I didn't even understand. I was That's trying a to good understand. One. I hope, Jane, you got all of that, too. <laughs> I know. Poor Jane. Yeah. Um, so no, I, I think we should take the vote. So you are not voting in favor of that motion? Of that motion. OK. So that, OK, so that motion is the fails, fails. Three to two. Three to two. OK, so now we're going to take, OK, I don't know what we're doing now. So, so now we're going to I'll wait for another motion. Well, there's a, mo there's a roll call. There's a, a motion roll for a roll call vote. OK, so we're reverting back to the original motion. So now the original motion to appoint two positions to two openings. There's four candidates. Mr. Dimitri presumably recommends himself and Mr. O'Leary. The liaison is recommending Mr. Breen and Mr. Dimitri. Okay, so this is a roll call name vote. Mr. O'Leary. Is there a discussion? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Yes, was there a second to that actually? There was a second to that motion. Andy. Yes, yeah. uh, Mr. Walner. Um, Mr. Dimitri is informing me that again, that there is there's a misunderstanding, the representation that Mr. Schultz has said that there was no conversation. In fact, there was a conversation that occurred two weeks ago, and he's pretty much informing he'll be resigning if this follows through as the plan is right now. So Mr. Dimitri's taken his if name out. If this is out. basically how we're going to operate, he's going to be resigning from his position. OK, so, so he's. Did I make a comment? Um, again, for the record, I spoke with Mr. Dimitri, okay? We may disagree on the tenor of the conversation. I never said I didn't speak with him. If the ZBA is going to resign over one person not being reappointed, let him resign, okay? I, they tried that playbook about three or four years ago, and this board should have accepted it when they did it. Um, that's not how we operate. We don't get bullied into reappointing people. These are not appointments for life. If people are going to resign, they can resign. Okay, I recommend Mr. Dimitri for reappointment. I think he's done a fine job with the 40B. Um, I think he's a fine member of the board. I think Mr. O'Leary has been a longtime member. I thank him for his service. I just happen to find there's someone more qualified. And if people are going to resign because they don't get their own way, I'm not going to be bullied and voting for somebody because they may resign. So if he wants to resign, he can resign. So you have four names. Is it one, two? Three? I'm going to recommend Mr. Dimitri and Mr. Breen. And if Mr. Dimitri decides to resign, we will find someone else to fill that position. So if um, Mr. Dimitri is in, is informing through text that he's going to with well, you have to wait. Yeah, vote the way you got to vote. Yeah. Madam Chair, just people don't have a discussion again. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to be bullied into a vote, though. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. But. I, 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 again, I, it I, is I, a little surprising I, that you're I, I being think the, texted I think the point, in real the, time by the person I, I, that's steering the board. I think board, the point that's been made here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Schultz just pointed out, you know, if this is the way we're going to operate, you know, that he's not going to be you know, bullied by members of the Board of Appeals or any chairman or anybody else, that's fine. Uh, but I think Mr. Dimitri's text to Mr. Walner is quite clear, too. If this is the way we're going to operate, right. they're not going to participate. And again, the way that this has been handled is very unorthodox and uh, unusual. And to my recollection, I don't ever recall it occurring this way. As I stated earlier, if there was going to be a recommendation different than the chair of a board committee or commission, it's been stated right up front. It's been known up front. It's been shared. And then each member of this board has been had the opportunity to confer and then make a, an informed decision, and nobody was surprised by a motion or a recommendation that was made at the night of the meeting. And this is what's occurred this evening. So, you know, to Mr. Dimitri's credit, and I have no doubt that what he said to Mr. Waller is true, that's a choice that he has to make along with other members of the, of the Board of Appeals. Uh, but that's unfortunate because what's driving the wedge between this board and our appointees is the way this has been handled. It's, it's not necessarily the recommendation. 
Yeah. Mr. Schultz has every right to make a recommendation that he thinks is in the best interest of the, of the board and our appointing authority. But it's been mishandled, and that's unfortunate. And these people are volunteers. And you get someone who's a 28-year incumbent who has not been informed by the liaison. Whenever I recommended someone other than an incumbent, no incumbent was ever surprised by my recommendation. I informed them up front that I was not going to be recommending them. I have a question to you. Did you tell Mr. O'Leary that you were not going to recommend him? Did you tell him that? I, no, I did not. You did not? Nor, well, okay. nor so am I obligated to. No, you're ob obligated to? Nor am I obligated These to. These are volunteers. Every time that I talk to somebody who's, a, who's a, an incumbent, and if I'm not going to recommend it, there have been times when I have not recommended an incumbent. I have given them the opportunity to either have their name considered or withdrawn with the knowledge that I'm not going to recommend them. That courtesy wasn't even afforded to this individual. And that's unfortunate. How can I recommend That's unfortunate and cowardly. Why wouldn't you okay. not tell them? Okay. You know, but that, again, that, you know that, this what? Is, we're not, so this we're, is, we're, no, no, this is what this no, board needs to be no. informed as to how this was handled or mishandled. And are we going to be a party to it without making an informed decision with all the information that's available? And again, I'm appalled. That's fine. I know, I'm appalled. I'm appalled at the accusations you're making against me. I no, spoke no, with the chair. Right. I, I need to speak. I, I need to speak for the fact that's that we no. have not. That, 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 what do you mean? Enough. I'm appalled by the fact that you didn't have you're the courtesy. You're appalled because it's your brother. I don't care if it was my no, sister you care or I don't it's care if it was brother. your brother. It's wrong. You care okay. because it's your brother. That's you enough. Should, no, it is not That's true. enough. That's it enough. is not true. Every okay. incumbent, every incumbent and every applicant that's that they're putting on it should have that's the opportunity enough. to know whether they're not going to be recommended that's, or not. That's enough. What do you mean it's enough? No, what's enough is the way that this has been mishandled. Can I just jump in for a second? Mr. Dimitri has communicated with me one more time if he had any idea that his recommendation was not going to be followed, he would have been here tonight to discuss it in person. He was not given that opportunity because he didn't know there was going to be a change of course of the recommendation. Again, I am suggesting that we table this until we can have a, a proper hearing because it is a process problem and we're not handling this professionally in my opinion. This is not how you handle volunteers. This is not how you communicate. And the chair you didn't and even the call your people. My, Ms. You didn't even call your I, people. All right, Ms. Mr. So Schultz, Mr. Schultz, right. one one person well, at a ridiculous. time. Beat okay, up or you didn't beat up what you didn't do and what you did do. Okay, but can I speak? I'm just saying all right. we should punt. I'm Mi saying we Mr. Punt. Mr. O'Leary, Mr. Walner. I'm just saying we're we not going to insult sorry. one another. We have the facts here. We <laughs> have the recommendation. We have Mr. Dimitri's. I guess statement of resignation, I'm not sure. So that's what he wants. He wants to s continue serving with Mr. O'Leary. He's made that clear. So that is very clear. Those are the facts. We're not getting anywhere arguing about this. We know what Mr. Dimitri wants. And if he doesn't get it, he's going to resign. That's what you're just, conveying. Just, just, he's just texting to, just to you. Just to clear it up, he's not. Yes, he recommended Mr. O'Leary. What he's complaining about, what he's stating is that he's going to he, resign he's being, if Mr. No, O'Leary. That's no, what he said. He is surprised at what is transpiring right now, where the recommendation is here, based on a conversation he had with his liaison two weeks ago. So that is not the impression he was left with two weeks ago. And what he's saying is, if I had known that it was going to be a, a conflict of recommendation he would have been here to speak up for his recommendation. But right now we're only hearing from one, not the other. And unfortunately I'm hearing it through text. So he's not saying I'm, I'm leaving because it's not Mr. O'Leary. He's, he's saying I don't agree with the process and how we're handling this. And if we're gonna play that way, he doesn't wanna play with us to do that. And that's, that's, that's a different, different than what you just said. And he'd like to be here to speak up for himself. I think to myself, this is a spectacle right now. You're creating. You I need this. I need to speak with you being quiet. Ma Ma Are you Ms. capable of being quiet? Mr. Schultz, Mr. Schultz, Mr. Schultz okay. please direct try. your comments th this through the, well, through the chair. I'm being please. shouted down here. This is turning into a spectacle with the two gentlemen to my left. We're going to bring in Mr. Dimitri and Mr. Paul Leary and make it more of a spectacle two weeks from now. No, thank you. Okay. Uh, I made my recommendations. People don't have to agree with me. That's right. I'm up for re-election in May. People can vote me out if they don't like me. Okay? That's why we have elections. Elections matter. Elections come with people that get votes. 
this is all the more reason why I stand behind my recommendations. What has just transpired for the last 15 minutes? And again, for the 10th time, I spoke with Mr. O'Leary a couple of weeks ago, excuse me, with Mr. Dimitri and Mr. O'Leary, but with Mr. Dimitri a couple of weeks ago. He told me that both he and Paul were seeking reappointment. That was the extent of the conversation. He also asked, do you think I'll be okay? And I said, I can't discuss that over the phone. We have an open meeting, but I appreciate everything you've done with the 40B. That was the whole, whole of the conversation. It was very short, okay? Period, end of sentence, okay? I, Mr. O, Steve O'Leary is carrying the water for his brother, Paul O'Leary. That's what this is all about right now, okay? They don't like my recommendation. That's fine, you guys may not like my recommendation. There's five people, three get the vote with me. If you don't vote with me, don't, I don't take it personal, we move on. But the personal attacks come from somebody who's been on this board for 30 years, who claims all these policies that don't exist, they're Steve O'Leary policies, they're not board policies. Right. I've okay. seen no written right. policies. No, stick I need to, to speak. Stick to the facts. I've seen no written policies saying I've done anything wrong. I've contacted the liaisons. I got a gentleman to the left of me here, Mr. Walner, didn't even call his people. Maybe he didn't know he's new, okay? So I really have a hard time with what I'm dealing with right here when I'm just trying to do the right thing. Again, I'm up for your election. If people don't like me, pull papers and vote me out. All right. But I really stand behind has, my recommendations. Okay. This really has nothing to do with elections. All it has to do with is we're appointing to the board this evening, just like we are appointing to others. We've heard from the liaison. We've heard from the chair who wants a different uh, appointment. Um, but in my experience here with this board, we go with the liaison recommendation, that doesn't mean that you have to vote with the liaison recommendation. And I've, or that the liaison even has to adhere to the chair's recommendation. I've only experienced that once since I first started here. But other than that, we typically go with the liaison recommendation. However, it's five votes, five votes for two positions. You vote the way that you want to vote, and I don't know that there's anything else that can be added to that dialogue a week from now, a month from now, two weeks from now, whenever we next meet. There's really nothing much more we can add to this dialogue other than our vote to a point. And I'm not in favor of tabling something when we have an active, pretty, pretty active board and a pretty significant matter that Mr. Dimitri, Mr. Dimitri has been carrying the pails for, for us for, for the whole entire time and serving as a chair for the whole entire time, so. The 40B. That would be absolutely, well, that's, Mr. That's, Paul Leary took a powder on, didn't even show up. I, he hasn't even publicly mm -hmm. recused himself. All right, I've let's, no idea let, what he let's did just keep, let's just stick to the, stick to the business at hand here, okay? We're, there's nothing more we can add to this dialogue unless there's anything else Ms. Gonzalez, is there anything else that no. you, anything else? Okay. So I think I have. I, I would just like to respond. First of all, I don't carry anybody's water. My brother doesn't need his water to be carried. You know, and, and again, what it comes down to. I said carry the water no, of the no, 40B. No, 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 not you. No. I don't think he, that's, that I was. I said that. He, he did oh. say that. He did I'll say, say that. again. All right. And again. I picked you know, up that. And, and, and I don't make up the policies. It's not Steve O'Leary's policies. And again, the policies and procedures and the, and the historical uh, uh, methodologies as to how this board is operated was long before I was here and it'll be long after I'm gone. Uh, so I don't make them up. And again, in all the years that I've sat here, I've never seen, and I agree, it's a spectacle. A spectacle created by our liaison here by not, again, allowing the recommendation of the, of the chair of the board committee commission to be heard by the rest of the members who have to vote, make an informed decision. You know, we've, we've heard from the chair that if you were provided the opportunity and he knew that the liaison's recommendation was gonna be different than his, he would have been present to inform the rest of us as to why there's a difference of opinion. And he hasn't been afforded that. And that's unfortunate. So the spectacle that's been created here this evening is not by Mr. Dimitri, not by Mr. O'Leary, who's looking to be reappointed to 28 years. You know, it's been a, a liaison and how he's handled it and mishandled it. So again, I'm not carrying anybody's water for a volunteer position who's given up hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of hours here. It doesn't need to be done. So again, I would recommend that this board handle it properly. How you choose to do it is entirely up to you. 
I move to a vote? Okay, so we have, I. So again, I, I just question my colleagues again. Are, are we I'm okay? not sure is, is the majority still okay? Admit, admit, admit. Is the majority still okay with moving forward? Or do you want to wait one more meeting? I'd like um, to move to a vote. Right. I'm not. I'm not sure what I'll the second. what the vote is. Okay, so we have a mo move to a vote. But what was the vote? Uh, it, you have the main motion. Motion. Main, motions motions on the, main motions on the floor. Okay. There's how many motions now do we have? Good. You only have one on the floor. So the motion is to vote. The vote vote on the appointments. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the the motion is to vote on the appointments. Okay. That was seconded by you. No, I think you made the motion. Is it a second. new motion or is no. it the original? This is the main, motion. the original motion. Yeah. So we're going back to what? That's was where you are. The other ones haven't made a second haven't or guessed. haven't prevailed. Right. Okay. All right. So, Mr. O'Leary, on the motion, there's no further discussion. There is there. No further discussion. Do you have sure. some, do you have any further? I just I just I really do not like being in this position of having to choose between two people, three people even, and not know the background when there's there's con when there's uh, disagreement from the leaders of this committee about what's going on, and I just feel like this is I don't want to choose between the two of them because I want to find the best person for this position. I don't feel like I have enough information on any of them to help do that. We have a conflict. You're asking me to vote on a name. I don't have enough information to make that decision. I don't care how we got here. I just think this is right now not a good situation, and I'm not very comfortable with this at all. And I really want to table this. Okay. So, Mr. Okay, Mr. Warner wants to table it. Mr. and Mr. Miss Gonzalez. Sure. Um, I don't know if uh, Mr. Walner knows that there is a citizen's activity form for Mr. Green here that if we could take a moment and he could read it, I don't know. It it's gives a lot detailed. of information. It's very detailed. Sure. We'll take a brief a brief recess so you can take a look at that. Yep. You may already have read that, but it was in our it was in the the citizen activity forms and I think he actually gave a little bit more detail of his I'll move for a five minute recess. Well, I, I mean, I'm just going to call a recess. I don't think you need to move, move for a recess. All right. Mm -hmm. Did you want to look at that? Yeah, whatever we have. It's I in your packet. It's in your packet. Okay. It's I, I did look through my packet, but it's come time on that. So both Mr. O'Leary's and? It's 100. Uh, Mr. Breen's is in there. I don't know. Is it only Mr. Mr. O'Leary's citizen information form? Mr. Mr. Breen's is in there because he was a new, new right. applicant. Mm -hmm. The one that's on file is not necessarily in there. The other is, is Mr. O'Leary? Mr. Demetrius no, isn't in there. Mr. O'Leary is Mr. O'Leary and Mr. Demetrius is just the one page. Just we want to reappoint. Not everybody. But I think we know Mr. O'Leary's background. I don't. I don't. I really don't know his background. Would you want to look at Mr. Breen's or not? I, I, I want to look at Mr. Green's, but I want to make, it's not valid for me to make a vote without looking at Mr. O'Leary. Is it the same vote? I don't know. If, I don't uh, think I saw anything from him. Well, Carrie, I didn't you. Yeah. Her form he's, is a there as well. he's a reappointee. He's a reappointee, so it's to what? seek reappointment. Yes or no? Yes. That's all we do. That's all we require of our current incumbents is to check off yes. Right. There's no other. So new applicants give you a more detailed mm -hmm. background information on themselves because they're introducing themselves to you, mm -hmm. as opposed to someone who's been serving for a number of years. Mm -hmm. At least Which three would be an incumbent we or more. Get to know them in the context of their work too. There's, there's a reason why Mr. Dimitri has made a recommendation. I'd like to hear it. I mean, you made your recommendation, and you gave some background. It's compelling. He's not the appointing authority. He's recommending his good friend. All right, friend. so we're not. We, we took a recess not to argue. Okay, it was to give Mr. Wong the opportunity to read, read this stuff. So. OK. What page is this on, please? I think it's 87. Is that the citizen activity form? 87, you said? 87 for the citizen activity form. And then there's a, I believe, a two page letter beginning on page 100. Mike, did we already handle this appointment? I haven't checked. 
We did. That was about March.
Fritos. Honey barbecue Fritos. What puts us in a very difficult situation? Honey barbecue Fritos. Did you, did you, I did, yeah. Puts us in a situation. Um, yeah, she's like, that's what, gross. What, what, Don't you want something with some substance to get you started eating? She said to me, like, you just call my food gross. She said, yeah. So you didn't have Just Any to last discussion? <laughs> We're voting. Yes, sir. We've already discussed this ad nauseum. Mr. Walner? This is doing a disservice to both Mr. O'Leary and the recommendation. Mr. Green. Bob Green. He's completely uh, suitable. It's not a question of that. The process is just an error. And we're not hearing from the, from the chair of this board, which is very critical to our future. Um, how many shares did you see here tonight? So one, one at a time, please. One at a time. All so right. I think we're just doing a disservice. And Mr. Dimitri has been surprised by what he's hearing over TV. And if he had known, he said he would have been here. And I believe he would be here. And so, again, this is just to, to make the vote is wrong. It's because if I vote for Mr. O'Leary, if I name Mr. O'Leary, I'm doing a disservice to Mr. Green, who looks very qualified. If I say Mr. Green, I'm doing a disservice to Mr. O'Leary, who served for all these years. This is just, there's no good choice here. And that's not what we should, that's not the position we should be in as a board. That is not the position. Time is our best friend. We should punt for two weeks and pick this up again when we have a chance to do this properly. 
Okay, so I know that's that my discussion. You know, I understand, and I know you made a motion to table, but that motion did not pass. Yes, so. for the record, I may just add one quick thing. One, one quick thing. I did speak with Mr. Dimitri on the break and reiterated our conversation we had a few weeks ago, and I think it's fair to say we have a disagreement. Um, I think he understands what I said and why I said it, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. And just for the uh, my colleagues. Uh, Information. I got texted by another uh, long-term, probably 20-year member of the Board of Appeals. is appalled by what uh, he's seeing right now and does not want to be a party to it and can follow through, uh, may very well resign. So we're going to be looking. We'll have plenty of vacancies if that's what you're looking to accomplish. Uh, this is what they did four well years done. ago. Well done. Yeah. All right. Let's not But let's keep to the vote at hand. Let's not be insulting to one another. <coughs> there is a difference of opinion. That's no what problem we have with the difference here. of opinion. That's what no we problem. have here. Uh, we have a little bit more than that. Total mishandling of the situation, total disregard for people who are volunteers for this community and how they handle it. That's what we have in front of us. It's okay to have differences of opinion. And you know, to the answer to your question is how many other chambers do we have here? None. You know why? Because there were no other differences of opinion. They were all asked their opinion. They were in concert with their liaison, and they were given the courtesy of a phone call and asked as to whether or not who they recommended. This was not the case with this particular situation. Okay, so. I have to say, I don't ever recall seeing a chair, chair person here during a board appointment. So ultimately, the ultimate decision making of over this falls with this board. Some of these decisions are easy, some of these decisions aren't easy. But ultimately, it's our responsibility to take a vote, make an appointment. And so uh, I think that's where we're at. And we have heard, it's heard loud and clear from the, um, I guess, the members of the board that want to resign unless one particular member is reappointed despite the liaison's recommendation for another qualified candidate for the position. So. Again, that's not what I'm getting for information. I'm getting information they object to the process. But then ultimately the process is it's up to the board to take the vote and make the decision on it. So we may actually be having a Draw more names because we're taking a vote. But that's a fact of fact of the things that we do. I I actually have an off the board hand up in the background there. Maureen, can I ask a question? Um, what is there an official role of liaison and from? the board to another board, um, just as uh, to educate me. As uh, In my experience, I had always thought that it was a, like a, almost a clerk's role, where you would come back um, with information from what the board is doing, um, what's, what's, what's new, what projects have come up, that, that sort of thing. I had, I, 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 is there an expanded definition of a liaison that gets appointed, you know, when you like when you have that list every every year and you all decide where you want to go. I think um, that's a lot of questions in one, and I think we can talk about that offline. I think we have a motion on the floor, and we we have a second to the motion, so we have to address that first. Um, but but you know, it's it's not clerical. Role, I can just answer you quickly to that, and then we can broaden the explanation of what that role is maybe offline with you, okay? Because we have to move forward. We also have other stuff. We, we were going along just fine, and we have, we have a lot of other business we have to attend to, too. Okay, so now there's a motion on the floor. There's a motion on the floor. There are four names in nomination. There are uh, requests of the current chair on nominations and there is a liaison's recommendation on nominations. So let's call the vote. It's a roll call vote. Mr. O'Leary. 
I'll defer at the moment, please. Defer. Is that so? Deferring I'm, I'm, I'm is a deferring until. Yeah. Deferring until. Everyone else is voting. Okay, so deferral uh, renders your vote together with the majority under the rule. What is that? No, a deferral of a vote. I, I, would, I would ask that you call on someone else first, please. Okay. Mr. Walner? James Dimitri and Paul O'Leary. Mr. Schultz? James Dimitri and Bob Breen. Mr. Gun Ms. Mr. Gonzalez. <laughs> he did it again. <laughs> Ms. Gonzalez? James Dimitri and Bob Breen. And Mr. O'Leary? Again, I would ask to uh, defer at this point to the chair votes. Okay. So the chair votes James Dimitri and Bob Breen and Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Dimitri and Paul O'Leary. Okay. okay, so we have, we have to move on. Next order of business. You. Just as a matter of comment, Madam Chair, I think it's unfortunate. It happens to be my brother, but whether it be my brother or uh, someone else's brother or sister, I think it's unfortunate. An incumbent uh, member, a uh, 28 uh, year a member, incumbent of any board committee or commission, uh, it was not extended the courtesy of a recommendation uh, or what the recommendation recommendation was going to be of the liaison uh, to the board. Uh, I think it was a cowardly act, and I think it's stop insulting me. All right, well, I'm sorry. we don't You've insult other members. I'll insult you. All right, you, because you, you know what? That's else. enough. That's enough. Mr. O'Leary, Mr. O'Leary, Can you carry Mr. your brother's water anymore? Carry your brother's water. Carry right. your brother's water. Enough. Carry your brother's water. That's enough. That's enough. We're, we're moving enough. along. We're 61 years old. All right, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. I've never seen. That's enough. All right, okay. I served with almost 30 people. I'm going to keep talking over to you. Shut up. I'll talk over you all night if I have to, Steve. Steve, I'll keep talking over to you. Shut up. Guys, we're going to take a brief recess. That's enough, guys. I've served with almost 30 different people. Steve, I'll keep talking over to you. Shut up. Steve, I'll keep talking over to you. No, it's unfortunate. Mr. Schultz, come on, Charles, come on. Come on. Take I believe it. Recess, you said? I believe it. We're taking a five-minute Yes, minute. yes, a five-minute recess. That is a terrible wow. disservice to this All right. community. Mr. Right. Steve, 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 carry his water a little more, Steve. Steve, carry his water a little more, Steve. Steve, carry his water a little more. Be more childish. It's your brother, Steve. Be childish and walk out of the room, Mr. Schultz. All right, continue. let's stop. By the way, Madam Chair. Uh, no. No, no, no. No. You've passed over associate you members. Want something? I'm, no, I'm no, wait a second. Take we, a brief recess we have, we have long term serving associate members. If you didn't want to appoint an incumbent, you should have considered the associate members for full membership, and that wasn't done either. Mr. Alderman. Yes, Madam Chair. We're done with the vote. I understand. But you understand? We're done with I don't even see the I don't even see the associate members' names for consideration for full appointment. They weren't considered for the by this board. Where's Jennifer Platt's name? Where is Jennifer Platt's I'm name? I'm not going to fight with you. I'm not. I have a question. Yes. I Where is our associate members' name for consideration? The names for nomination. So the names and nomination were presented to us. The Again. forms were given to us. Some of them, some of them weren't there. Again, I was liaison to the Conservation Commission. Two associate members' names were left off for consideration. I asked the clerk to include them for consideration of the board just this evening. We were not put forth by the liaison consideration of associate members who are long-serving associate members in this committee for consideration. Where's that? A liaison skedaddle, so I have no idea. Why not? By the way, one of our associate members is a long-term serving member who's also an attorney and has been there for probably a dozen years. Jennifer Platt. Not even considered because the liaison didn't put it forward. Why? Why? When he comes back, maybe we can ask. 
No, we're not no, going to No, we're not going to ask why the associate no. members weren't considered for full membership? No, we are not going to consider. Why the names and nomination were the names and nomination. As a, as a nomination. member of the board, why wouldn't you want to consider the associate member? Steve, I'm not going to talk about this. You don't you. want to? I don't. I don't. Oh. The likelihood is we're going to have to consider associate members in the next meeting because of Why the mass be exodus now? of the other members. Why wouldn't they be considered now? He should know who the associate members Those are. Those names weren't in nomination. Because he didn't put it forward. I, my names from my associates were not put forward for Conservation Commission appointment. I put them forward and asked the clerk to include them because I know my liaison assignments. I know my board's committees and commissions. And the board can make an informed decision based on everybody who's eligible. And the first ones who should be eligible, the one who's been putting in the time and the effort and the hundreds of hours as an associate member, and what is sitting in on, a, on the 40B hearing right now, isn't even been considered for full membership. You're going to be forced if there's resignations, you may consider that, if she still wants to be considered. Why? I don't know. Why anybody want to be considered for anything at this particular point, I do not know. I didn't sign. I still have to sign everything. No, really? I think I have a lot to sign there. Yeah. No reason. Other signing reasons. They're in there for everything. Am I? Yeah. These are just. Yeah, I can mm. flip through these ones. So if you have another one. No. There's only three signing reasons. Is that the correct one? Look, is, is, is your own digital? No. She didn't sign. All right. I'm sorry. I put them in. Um, <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just going to do it all at the end because I had. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you signed them. I had a keys to I'm reading, so I couldn't. All right. I think we're gonna. We can finish it at the end. We have to get moving on them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I had them there because I was going to sign them after. All right. So, yeah, make sure, make sure I'm on everything in that pile. Okay. I don't know Jane, do you mind if we just keep that pile and at the end of the meeting? We can, we we'll, can we'll make sure we signed everything, okay? Yep. All right, so we'll call the meeting. Are you ready? Are you ready? All set? Oh, you, are you leaving? No. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Okay. Let's call the meeting back to order. In our next. We're, we're through with all of our else. licenses and appointments. Our yeah. next order of business is water, water wastewater planning advisory committee review of the charge. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, as a follow up to the conversation that took place at the board's last meeting, um, I've provided a copy of the water and wastewater planning committee, planning advisory committee's charge as approved, I believe, in 2010. Um, this would effectively be the uh, committee that that we discussed that has not necessarily been active. Um, so I, I put the, uh, the charge there for the board's review and you know, possible consideration. And Mr. Gibberto, how many members are on this committee I or believe, have been on it in I the believe, past? I believe it's a, um, a seven-member uh, committee. And I'll check with the town clerk's online information system to confirm. It has not been active, uh, at least not in the uh, five years that I have worked for the town, so it certainly has not been active recently. Um, and are there any current appointees to the committee? There are. Um, I believe that one is listed as a former select board member by virtue of their former role and um, 
you bear with me while I bring up the current membership listing. I can go through it in detail. So I'm showing a seven member committee with um, three positions currently filled, although one is uh, identified as a select board representative, who I mentioned in the last meeting is no longer a select board um, representative. So just to go over the membership, there's a listed uh, DPW representative, health representative, uh, what I would call a, an at-large term, uh, two select board representative, one of which is listed as being held by Mr. Masseri, a CPC representative listed as being held by Warren Pierce, Jr., and then what it looks like an at-large position held by Luke Roy. Luke Roy. So three of the seven seats are filled, but one of them is is incorrectly identified as the person's no longer a board member. And as the members recall, the last time we discussed this was on the basis of maybe uh, reinitiating or reactivating the committee, given the work that is ongoing with regard to water and sewer. Um, so I think the uh, town administrator wanted us to take a look at this on the docket this evening for any kind of further commentary of the members to see if we needed to modify or revise the charge of the committee. So um, it's in on page 111 in the share folder. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's only a one page, really, one page mission statement of the committee and um, it was formed for long-term water and wastewater <coughs> issues to, to address those and if the members recall the last um, discussion was maybe we wait maybe we reactivate it now so that the maybe we can consider appointments to that committee and newer members can you know get up to speed with respect to the you know, the, what's going on with both of those issues at the moment. So we've had an ongoing waste, wastewater update and water update every, every meeting so far, just so that the board members can be apprised as to what the status is of permitting, you know, facilities and things of that nature. So um, if the members have had a chance to take a look at the um, mission, does anyone have any further, Mr. Walner? Yeah, um, obviously it includes water, which is almost becoming a non-issue at this point, so a lot of that will need to go away. And the, um, the function, the mission, that paragraph is very, uh, it's very broad in my mind. It's, it's almost too much, and we already have another group that's already doing a lot of this effort. So it, it, it's just the, the scope of it has to be redefined from to work with the current group that we already have working on this. Um, in my mind, just when I looked at this briefly, that's those are the two biggest things I picked up on. Yes. Yes. I'll also just add that in just informal questions with people who potentially might be on this board, there is some enthusiasm for doing it, but there's also some strategic reasons for not. It'd be good to, it's not a bad idea to form it or to create it or to prepare for it, but it feels premature for where we are in the process right now. Um, so it, from my opinion, just from looking at, you know, weighted um, opinions from different people, it feels a little premature, but I think at some point we're gonna need it. I just don't think it's, it, nothing's gonna change right now with it being in existence or not being in existence. That's my view. Uh, quick question for you, Mr. Gilberto. Th this board came up with the mission statement of this committee, or did the committee itself come up with its mission statement? I believe that there is a, a vote of this board approving the establishment of the committee, including this charge. Um, the, the origin of it prior to that in 2010, I, I have to only assume it came from the select board, but I don't know that to be fact. All right. Anybody else have any comment, comment on it or discussion? Mm -hmm. Mr. O'Leary? My comments are the same as they were at the last meeting we talked about. For reformulating this again, again, I, I too believe it's it's premature um, until uh, we get a clearer direction as to um, the functionality of, of implementing any type of wastewater treatment through Andover, and Greater Lawrence sewer, uh, and the associated costs with it, and whether until this board makes a determination as to how to uh, 
implement it, whether it be through phasing or one fell swoop, I think it's I think it's premature. So it's a uh, again we could use all the help we can get once we know what direction we're going in and what the timelines are going to be. But until then, there isn't going to be much for them to do. And I think injecting um, more people and taking more of their time unnecessarily as we move forward, because we are moving forward, moving forward rather quickly. Um, until we know what direction we're going in and this board has made a determination as to what direct that direction is going to be, I don't think we need the help yet. And again, I don't think we'll be in a position to give them uh, a mission statement and direction to assist us in going out there and selling it to the public. So I, I just think, you know, we have a, a good working group right now uh, through the administration and uh, professional staff, along with liaisons from this, this board to, and along with our consultants, to find out what, what direction are we really going to take and how, how are we going to do it? You know, in the relationships with the, with the Andover and Greater Lawrence Sewer District, that can only be handled through the administration and this board. So until those things are ironed out, I think it's premature. So I, I don't think it's critical at this point, and I don't think we should be necessarily asking for volunteers when there isn't going to be much for them to do, meaningfully do, uh, for a while down the road. Um, Mr. O'Leary. Oh. I mean, I'm Mr. Schultz. <laughs> I'm looking right at you. And um, I wasn't sure if Mr. O'Leary was finished. No problem. The Let's EDC see. just did an economic business forum at, at Kitty's all probably a month or so ago, and we spoke with all the stakeholders and the businesses. Pretty much they're on 28 Concord Street, and we've taught them, we rolled out our plans for wastewater and some timelines. Um, I think, well, I do agree that there's not a whole lot this board is going to, this committee is going to do right now, but I, I think it should be formulated now. I think the stakeholders should have a stake in this. I think the business community should be involved in this. I think these boards, like our boards, change. These committees often don't. Um, I think this has to be pushed. I think this is only going to get done, meaning wastewater, if we push it with Andover. We wait for Andover to do it for us. We're going to be waiting a long time, and we're never going to have it. So I think the I think the business community, the stakeholders, should have a committee. The grant they may just meet quarterly for the first year or two, but I think this should be formed now. And you know, keep it on the radar screen, keep public uh, awareness of the wastewater products uh, projects that are coming. I think it's a good idea, and um, I think it should. I know EDC is going to address this issue of, of picking a committee member at their next meeting if this board was to be revitalize and again there's not a whole lot they would do right now but I think they should meet and I think the stakeholders should be heard on this issue. Is anyone else? Just wouldn't the, from, wouldn't, oh, wouldn't the chairs have to be renamed then if we're going to do EDC and other you know private people we have one I just heard your chair so I don't know are they as pre-assigned or is it flexible? Well it, it reads the membership is it reads as a combination of representatives from various elected and appointed boards, committees, and employees of the town of North Reading and a cross-section of North Reading citizens of diverse interests. Membership shall be appointed by the Board of Selectmen who shall make changes in the membership as necessary. Okay. It's not really a decision of each individual board yeah. or commission. I think where this can be moder modernized or updated from the 2010 time that it was initiated is that we, we have a permanent, so to speak, water supply, but I think that's pretty much the, the charge or the function of the board is, st is still relevant to what's going on now and relevant to what is going to be happening in the future, but certainly evaluating emergency water sources probably was done in terms of our connection yeah. or maintaining yeah. the connection right. and all the efforts that were done with maintaining the connection to Andover. But um, and then redundancy efforts, I think, were considered throughout the course of that process. So Madam I think Chair? that might be the only, that might be my only thought in terms of the boards making a mod modern modification of the function. And, and I would even go so far as to say this is really a wastewater planning advisor. I don't think water needs to even be on here. I think that's, yeah, it's not part of the scope anymore. Really. No, I think it's just a wastewater planning advisory. Yeah, because I think we have liaisons that are right now handling the the expansion of water, and we have the consultant, the expert, working on that on a regular basis. So, um, so I guess 
could we um, want to consider maybe offering our, and it's the first time we're looking at this, and so maybe we can, by the next meeting, offer some suggestions on, I think it's intentionally vague to fit, fit whatever function the board needs the committee to fulfill, but do we want to make some, two, two of the members want to hold off on it, um, do we at least want to make some you know, recommendations on. I, I don't think there's any problem. I mean, at some point we're going to need it, so I don't see any problem in creating the one pager mission mm. statement. It's just a question of when you, you know, implement it. So it's good to plan ahead. I have no problem planning ahead. I, I, it's not agree. Anyway. Even if we don't flip the switch, it's good to plan ahead. So. All right. M Mr. O'Leary? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Walner, were you done? Yeah, I'm done. Thank All right. You. Mr. O'Leary. The thing is, you know, when this was formed, you know, a lot of it was speculative. You know, what, what should we do? How should we go about it? What should we be doing? Um, this board and prior boards, and most recent prior boards, have already made those determinations. You know, we have a long-term solution for water now. Uh, in that deal, we also got our supplier to agree to assist us in joining the Greater Lawrence Sewer District. So those determinations have already been made. Which is, again, if you look at you know, required by planning, organizational, financial, operational, you know, how we're going to do, where we're going, what are we going to be doing, those decisions have already been made. We're not going MWRA. It's not an option for us. So our only option is now Greater Lawrence Sewer, and it's through Andover. Uh, we have, again, long term water solutions now, and that's, that's pretty much a done deal. So, again, I don't. I don't see the purpose right now, you know, other than, you know, at some point we're going to need uh, all hands on deck to go out and inform the electorate, town meeting and the electorate, uh, to support a wastewater plan. So that's what we're going to need and when we're going to need it. But until we have those facts, this group is not going to help us glean those facts. The process is already in place and the uh, individuals that are going to be responsible for it are already in place and doing that work. So I don't get it. I, I, I don't understand right now. Right now what we need is once we have formulated our plan and we know what it is going to be, that's the time to form some sort of a committee to assist us in going out there to buy into the program and then get out there and sell it to the public. Uh, otherwise, there's no other work to be done. There really isn't any other work to be done. It's being done right now. We have our direction. We have our source, we have our target, you know, and we know what the route's going to be. Now it just comes down to cost, affordability, and how we're going to implement it. So a lot of the work that was spelled out in this mission nine years ago has been done. So I, I, again, I did, I'm not one for turning people away and assisting us, but I think what they're going to need to assist us in is buying into the plan that we finally formulate and uh, that's called Silver Republic. So a lot of what was needed to be done back then is already underway and being done, and decisions have already been made because they're made for us or by us and for us. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm questioning the need at this time. Okay, I think that's what you mentioned the last, yeah, I think uh, both, again, both I, members I mentioned, waste both colleagues time. mentioned that. I think what it's, be for us on is to kind of revise the revise the charge and I would agree that we have sort of that efforts are, were already achieved or results yielded with respect to the permanent water solution here so that portion of the function is com mainly completed and people are actively uh, you know experts and consultants are actively working on that I think this was initiated probably um, miles before that result was yielded, of course, y years before that result was yielded. I think the, the, um, the two-year agreement was voted on in 2015 when I first became a member of the board. So that, that was a result of years, of years of efforts prior to that. So it's, you know, probably a good thing that it has a direction to move in and I don't think it's a bad thing to revise the charge and then 
bring people on board that can get up to speed with this because it took a long, long time to get up to speed on that that portion of events that have transpired and I'm sure that this <coughs> committee is probably going to want to, you know, if, if there'll be members, membership to, you know, take part, they'll want to get up to speed and be involved in some of the things that are going on going on right now or expected to go on right now so so we can tie in but I'm just thinking today I'm just our thought today isn't to establish or appoint committee members so we don't even have any names before us for nomination right. it's really just to revise this the function do we want to as a board take a look at this mm -hmm. and revise the function that's really what it's before us on no one had it last meeting we found it nor Michael found it, and that's why w what we're talking about, not not necessarily filling a committee today yep. or tomorrow or two weeks from now, but just let's revise the functions or revise the mission statement. So mm -hmm. well, maybe what we can do is agree that you know we'll we'll take a look at it at the next meeting if if there's if people if members want to send their comments directly to Mr. Gilberto to add in, similar to what we're what we did what we did with the next thing that we're going to be considering and uh, maybe we can work on more modernizing or you know re revising this for the next meeting all right anybody else have any more comment or discussion or no all right so next order of business will be the draft review the draft of the unaccepted street improvement policy and this is our second or third review of this this second review of this mm -hmm. policy and if the members recall this really is a policy we're trying to put in place for sharing responsibility with sharing responsibility with uh, private ways that might want the their street improved uh, on a one-time basis similar to betterments although not not the same because we're not going to accept the street in the end of the improvement so you can see from the policy and I don't know if Michael you mr. Gilbert you want to highlight some of the changes but you can see from the policy that's included in your Dropbox um, that um, I think we're on one page 112 there's highlighted areas that have been that have been moder moder modified, right, revised? The modifications are, are, are few. What, what I really did was take the feedback that I heard at the board's discussion of this at the last meeting or the meeting prior and incorporate them. Um, and I added a couple of comments as well just to provide some, some background. Um, yeah, I, I can go through them all if the board members would like. Um, but there, there are a lot of them, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in terms of, the, I guess what I'll do is I'll start with the changes. Um, the feedback was that uh, the language in the uh, third bullet was restrictive in requiring the 50% match, um, so I added the word generally mm -hmm. um, to give the board the flexibility. And then I also added in that same bullet that nothing in the policy shall preclude the select board with the approval of town meeting from entering into an agreement to provide more or less than 50% of the necessary funds, which I think is consistent with that word generally. Moving on, a couple of bullets down, the red writing, I think it's number five, mm -hmm. excuse me, six, where I have added in here, budding property owner shall be required to contribute a combined total of 50% of the funding required to develop a reasonable cost estimate to be deposited into the appropriate town gift account. Any remaining balance after a cost estimate is developed shall be applied to the abutters portion of the construction cost or refunded in the event construction is not approved by um, at by or at either of the two subsequent town meetings so that was intended to reflect feedback I heard in the board's discussion which um, described a desire to have um, the abutting property owners contribute to the design now they did not contribute to the feasibility and design work that was done for Swamp Pond Road so this would be different than what happened with Swamp Pond Road uh, but I've added that language to reflect the discussion. Um, there was an inconsistency here on the first bullet on the next page uh, where there was a reference to the majority of property owners residing on the private street. 
representing a majority of all of all the road frontage um, it's clear if we're going to do a road improvement in this fashion we need all of the property owners involved to sign off we, we can't do it otherwise so I've updated that to be correct there was a desire to give a longer period of time for, for the abutting property owners to come up with the money so I've increased that to 180 days which I think what is what was suggested at the last meeting and then there was some discussion about the issue of the easements uh, being recorded at the registry of deeds so I added that language as well so that sort of summarizes the um, the changes from the board's last discussion um, I would also note though that I have talked with the town planner on a couple of occasions about this and I guess I would just remind for the purposes of this discussion of the board that this policy is intended to address situations where there is not a road layout right now which is what's going on with Swamp Pond Road for roads where there is a layout we have a betterment by lots called assessments actually chapter 25 and I've included it in the packet in the past couple of meetings I don't know that it's appropriate for this particular project meaning the Swan Pond Road project but one alternative that might be available to us would be to seek to modify the town zoning bylaws where if the town were to acquire an easement or the, the, the land for purposes of this road construction by eminent domain and I'm, we'd have to structure however that would happen and whatever thresholds would be required we may be able to modify the bylaw to avoid creating that zoning nonconformance that we've been talking about that happens when we separate one part of the parcel from another so that would be a bylaw amendment that might be an option to us I don't again I don't know that it's something that would serve us well for the Swan Pond Road project because that has already gone to town meeting and we've already said how we intend to hear it uh, how we intend to handle it but it's an alternative that might be um, a solution to allow us to get these roads on a path to being accepted by the town and getting the, um, the either an easement or a fee in the roadway for us we may or may not want to hear more about that as an option from the planner and town council but I, I do feel I ought to at least bring that up I, I'm not again I'm not sure that it helps us with the Swan Bond Road project so oh Mr. Schultz uh, Michael when we kind of kicked around in capital tonight is what are we going to do with um, when we improve these roads tonight is we're going to have to improve water mains in conjunction with the roads do we want to incorporate that into the the cost of of doing these things I remember tonight with DPW yeah. indicating that just a lot of times if you repair a road you're gonna, you're gonna have some they call them spaghetti lines on some of these unaccepted roads that are out there that you're gonna have to replace should we somehow incorporate that into this policy I think that the general rule of thumb is if we're gonna be paving any of these roads and we're gonna be improving them to the condition that they could be paved maybe better than they have been in the past historically we would want to address any of the underground utilities so I mean that would make sense it doesn't apply in the case of Swamp Pond Road there's no water main out there right but you know there are plenty of these roads that are out there where the so-called spaghetti service lines are in the ground multiple lines running next to each other that would be better served by having a main so I think that's something that could that certainly the board could consider Just in relation to that, I, I think if, if town meeting votes to you know, support some projects such as this, generally the water mains and stuff would be, or the replacement mains would be through the water department anyway. Right? In other words, I, I mean, the, I, I can't speak to what's happened by custom. I can speak to what the bylaw says. And yes, yeah. if you were to follow the bylaw, it would be an assessment. There'd be a 50% share. And that work could be done as well, from what I can see in the bylaw. But in terms of the what generally happens with these projects, my understanding is we usually just end up doing doing the paving. Maybe we do the water if there's a developer that's involved. So it's the board's pleasure, really. How do you how but do you want to? We have in other in other instances where we haven't necessarily charged the director butters here for a replacement of the water lines because we know they're old, we know they're gonna need to be replaced at some point. They break at times, then we go in and fix them anyway. So I don't know. If we yes, that, so that was reported to us by the water superintendent this evening. Right. He referenced that very example where a petition was filed for water main improvements for the 50-50 cost share, and town meeting opted to vote the 100 percent component of it. So the town paid for the whole water main. Yeah, he, he didn't give a specific example no, because people are paying their water bills anyway, you know, and supporting the rest of the community and whether they're going to accept the street or not. But to me, if a town meeting buys into redoing the road. 
the water department through the capital and again through the assessments and everything else that they already paid for their water bills should be covering those costs. We're just saying if by, if by redoing the road we incur water costs vis-a-vis -vis, well, solely by the purpose of redoing the road, how do we handle, how do we handle that? Like, we otherwise wouldn't be fixing these things but for we're putting a road in. Yeah, That's what I'm talking know, about. Yeah, it, it, my response to be, would be that if town meeting votes to do the road over, water department will pay <coughs> the costs of replacing those water lines because these people are going to be paying their water bills anyway. And through mm -hmm. those water bills, they're supporting all the other water projects throughout the town also. They shouldn't be hit with an additional assessment. But and aren't the, isn't the... Yeah, that may, it may speed it? up the process for that particular road, but town meeting will have voted already to redo that, redo that road. So the water line should just be you know, upgraded or replaced at that time, maybe ahead of schedule. Because if it breaks, we're going to take care of it anyway. The water department was going to take care of it anyway. And it makes sense before it's you ours. go and lay out the road. It's ours anyway. What's the that? water line in the road is ours. So what I'm saying is if you get a situation where but for us improving the road, now we have to improve a water line that we wouldn't have to improve otherwise, how do we want to handle that situation? I mean, I think that's something that it, it, the neighbors should. Would have to how does that work with the other plans, Mike? So I'm, I'm reading the... Um, the, the bylaw, Chapter 25, and it makes reference to streets, sidewalks, and storm drains. Interestingly, I, I don't see a reference to water, which I'm surprised at, but I'm trying nothing to remember if I point. had yeah. to pay for that when I. I'm sorry? I'm trying to remember if I had to pay for that when I improved my road. It, it's likely that, that if you were, it were, pay, if you were improving did. the road, it's likely that you did. Yeah, you, you're building a new home. Yeah. You're going to yeah. improve the road. You're going to bring a new water line to your new, yeah. your new service. Because I didn't have a water line. Right, you didn't have one. <laughs> right. But this is different. These are existing homes that are already on the water system. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be paving over it. If it's this type of a road, they're probably aged. You know, they're yeah. aged. So they're going to be somehow, somewhere, they're going to be replaced, whether, whether they break or they're on a regular schedule. Uh, to me, the bylaw is somewhat silent for a reason. So uh, reading further along, I see there's another section that's dedicated for public water supply and sewers, talking about water or sewer improved betterments being assessed under the uniform unit method, town being required to, to provide 50% of necessary funds. So again, this would, both of these sections would apply right now in the instances where there is a road layout. My understanding of the purpose of the policy is to apply in the instances where there is not a road layout. If I have that wrong, certainly I would love to be corrected so I can address the board's desires. But right now we have apparently two processes that reflect, that, that address this. Again, how, how often and when we last actually followed them mm. in doing these projects, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you. Again, I think our policy should uh, allow as much maximum flexibility on the board's part to make a recommendation to town meeting as to what to fund, what not to fund. And Whatever we make for a recommendation of town meeting, let them vote on it. And again, it could always be amended too. So I think that the change does allow for that, for sure. It says 50, but then it says we're free to to suggest that a different a different percentage. I just think the most the more flexibility we have, the better we are able to address any given situation. Yeah. Yes, one point is different than travel different. way. So yeah. well, bless you. Bless you. All right, so are we um, satisfied with the modifications made to, to this? And so we have two read-throughs before we actually uh, adopt it. Yeah, ordinarily you would approve it at the second, in the second reading, but I, I didn't believe that we were ready to do that <laughs> this evening, so it's not structured that way. No. The first reading. Well, we want to make sure there's no pink in it. It's just black and white. Yeah. There's no typos in it. Um, does anyone have any other comments with regard to any revisions or the revisions made or anything m necessary? I should note that this only now having come back to the board, it has not gone to the Planning Commission, and I, I do believe that the board discussed it the last meeting. They wanted some feedback. So I don't know if you want me to send it to the planner for them to review before we actually formally consider it as a policy. I also know that there are members of the Finance Committee who have input. I've encouraged them to provide that input to the select board if they wish to, and I know they've spoken with some of the members of the board individually. But if you want me to send it to the Planning Commission, that might be the, this might be the time. If we're, if we're pretty sure this is where we think this board stands, this would probably be the time to send it to the Planning Commission. So what is the board's pleasure? Any, the Mr. Oh, 
Mr. Walner. Yeah, I, I, I see absolutely no harm in asking other people to review it. We don't have uh, any pressure to us to do anything at this point. So let's have it carefully reviewed by as many people who have a stake in it as possible. Mm -hmm. Mr. O'Leary? Just in relation to uh, comment number MPG that you made, number five, you know, all owners of all properties abutting directly um, must be submitted a letter signed by all owners. So are we going to allow, you know, one person to veto yeah. the whole yes. neighborhood? Yes. Yeah. From a liability standpoint, we can't just go on someone's land. Yeah. No, but again, if there's a potential for a workaround, yeah. we shouldn't avoid the workaround. If it's the last person at the end of the last house on the left, you know. Then they're, then they're not affected by the project. That's fine. Well, no, it depends on what the project is. Well, if you, you stop know. it before their house, they're not, they're well, not affected by it. So that what I'm saying is, you know. So and, that ERS suggested maybe a revision of considering circumstances. Like the one, Swan Pond's an anomaly because the, the, the DPW the the director said you can't stop and start. But there might be another road where you could pave to, let's say, right before the last resident who doesn't want to participate, even though they benefit from it, you know. So right. I think in Swan Pond, right in the middle, there was an owner who didn't want to participate. They were having well, a struggle. Again, it, is it, I mean, are we looking for the owners to sign off on it as far as uh, financial responsibility? And I know in another section here we say that they're responsible for, you know, and how they, it doesn't, divvy it up. Doesn't, doesn't come right out and say it, but, you know, but how they divvy it up is between them. Yeah, right. Um, no, I think it was just authorization. But they everybody divvy it up has how to they sign want. off. Everybody has to authorize the, the, the project. Right. You don't have to pay for it. I'm just concerned that that may be a wrinkle, you know, because I think in the Swan Pond situation, there may be a situation where they're willing at some point to sign off if they're not financially responsible. But uh, I don't know that this would allow for that at the beginning stages of the project. You know, at what point? At what point do all owners have to sign up? I guess well, it, it's pretty specific saying of the all properties budding or directly impacted by the proposed project. So I think it, I don't know if it would make sense for the town to chip in 50% of its money to improve a road where not everybody on the road wants to allow that. On the, it's a private way. Right. So. Okay, Mr. Gilbert. So, and to answer the question, the, the intention was that there would be a, a letter of interest signed by the property owners up front for a project to even be considered. That, that's the way it's been drafted. It's a letter of interest. Is that, that's not the release. No, no. The re release, I think, is further along in the process that, as we described here. So the, 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 the thinking was the releases would be signed further along. And the reason is because the release will come after they figure out the yeah, cost. They, they want to know the cost, right. And so you want to be able to provide that cost. But in order to get the cost, they have to come up with 50% of the money to yeah, estimate yeah, it, right? That, that's, if, if outside resources are required in the opinion of the public works director, from what I heard at the October 28th board meeting, the idea was that the, they would come up with their share. So I think the reason we want to establish who's in and who's who's interested and who's not interested early is because, as we saw with the case in Swamp Pond Road, it may affect the design, where we're locating stormwater retention basins, for example. Um, so I, that, I think the thinking was get an indication of what we're actually trying to, to do for a project before we start spending funding to design it, if we have to. And because some cases you may not have to. It may not be as complicated as Swamp Pond Road. And I think that the this policy, which I think is more of a procedure at this point than a policy, I'm trying to step by step outline it, but I think it could be, it could serve the purpose of, of a policy if need be. Okay, so do we want to take some more consideration of it, or do you, are we ready to no, at no, least no, share it around? Again, I, I think this is terrific. You know, I, I think it's something that's that's long overdue, and it provides us with an opportunity to address uh, some situations around the community that we haven't really mm -hmm. uh, done, except on a very limited basis over the years when someone came forward and said, here's some money. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's a good idea, and I also agree that we should run it by the Planning Commission and, and the other appropriate boards and committees uh, for their input before we accept it. So, 
Okay. So I think it's ready for that. I think it's ready for that transmission. And we'll still have the opportunity before we ordain it to. And we will add water improvements for consideration if I heard that correctly to this. Is that correct? Not necessarily. No. No. I, Not add water. Well, again, I, Maybe I, I think water. it should be discretionary, depending upon the size of the project, the age of the pipes, and all the rest. It shouldn't be a mandatory 50% 50, 50 their cost in time it buys into it. So, you know, so maybe a may, so it'd be a, it may be a requisite condition. But then again, it may not. Yeah. So the board may determine that up to 50% would be provided. Zero is up to 50%. So, you know, to me, everybody in town that's tied into our water system is already paying for all the other water improvements around town. So they should necessarily be subjected to To their home based upon the project. Because if we were redoing another, when we do re other streets, redo other streets, we determine it's more cost effective to do the water mains and do the stormwater replacement before we repave it just because it's due for some repaving. So, uh, so I, I'm, am I hearing that the You're board hearing wishes from me. <laughs> Board wishes to add the ability to include water improvements in this program, or no? No. Well, I mean, yes, Mr. Yeah. O'Leary. I, I yeah, think I depending on the situation, right. it shouldn't so we be. Need the flexibility again. To well, I think the word flexibility. I think we need a policy. Policy shouldn't be flexible in the sense that you can take care of this street and not take care of this street. I think people need to know what they're getting into. It's got to be uniform and consistent. Um, would that, would that be part of when they're looking at the cost? Would that be part of the cost, that that would be up front? So replacement, if it was necessary, replacement if they needed of water it. mains is a completely different project yeah. than, de depending on what type of construction the DPW director <coughs> determines needs to be done on the road. You know, are they going to? do full depth reconstruction of the road? Are they just gonna do an overlay of the road? I mean, I think it depends on a case by case basis on what, what the plan is and what they can do. I mean, we keep going back to Swan Pond, but there's a, a whole host of anomalies in Swan Pond that have to be considered. But one thing that does need to be a part of this are storm drains. And that that's pretty clear, but not replacement of water mains. That's a totally different <coughs> location in the in the roadway as well as project cost and uh, people have to be able to chip in 50 percent of yeah, the cost. A lot of these roadways they're not going to meet standards so they're going to be in the middle of the roadway uh, they're going to be yeah. in, the, in the right of way or in the hopefully not or in, access. or in our case there was no water pipes that I mean there was a well Right. So in that case, you'd have to. The water you'd had have to, be to cover run. the cost. You know, to me, if there's nothing there, you'd have to cover the cost. If there's an infrastructure there, <coughs> and you're going to be paving over it, and it makes sense to replace the infrastructure that's there, that's part of the main one, the water system that we already supply and they're already paying for through their water bills. You know, then there needs to be some, you know, recognition of that, so that. Should they have to cover the whole cost? Should they have to cover 50% of the cost? Or does it make sense? And then we have some accepted streets that we're re redoing now and reclaiming. And, you know, there were accepted streets, you know, 40 years ago. And, you know, the infrastructure was poor when it was put in. And we pay for it all now anyway. Well, these people, you know, live here, pay taxes, and have the infrastructure in place already. So, again, I'm just saying, rather than mandating that it's going to be 50%, to do the water, let's just allow us to waive it, or 25 percent, or whatever it's going to be. That's all. Rather than hard and fast. 
And again, it depends on the situation. And in your case, where there was no service there before, then you own putting in the new service. Yeah. So it's your convenience. How many roads would we have in that situation? Would, would there be many that I, wouldn't I think, even have water? So you would, would have wells? The, again, if I'm wrong, someone's got to correct me. But the policy is intended to apply in the instances where there is not a road layout. So by definition, we've eliminated a ton of the unacceptable right, roads here so in town. Very, right. And then you're talking within the category of the roads with no layout, those that actually have water serv servicing them, which there may be a few. Um, we, we saw an example presented today of a um, uh, spaghetti line sort of disaster on a particular road off of Lakeside Boulevard. And um, you know, the fact is there's a layout there on that road. That road is perfectly eligible for improvement under our Chapter 25 assessments by law and perfectly acceptable for the improvements associated with the section that relates to water. So this policy wasn't intended, at least as far as I understood it, to address those. Right. So to, to answer it you know, succinctly, there's, not, there's probably not very many. I mean, we've stumbled across one that's more challenging. It just happens to not have water, so we don't have to deal with the issue. I don't think there's any utilities in the road, honestly. We just happened to stumble on that example. Yeah, this today, yeah. yeah. Just cited as an example. It's been a challenge for multiple years. If almost everything is custom, I'd leave yourself flexibility wherever you can. And again, any, the, the, the project will be what the project is, and people will decide not to do it after they hear about it. But I'd leave flexibility because it's all custom. It sounds very custom, and very, very remote. Allow up to allow up to fifty percent to be determined by the board, which is you negotiated with the. At the end of the day, if yeah. they don't want to do it, they don't, they don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. It's pretty clear that it does do that. I think adding yeah. in the requirement to incorporate in replacement of water mains is something a little, it's taken it into a, a different. different direction yeah. than I think what this was intended to cover. And I think in the example where it's unaccepted or uh, not unaccepted, but private way and it might be in the middle of the road or something, if the DPW director determines that's going to come up and be replaced, and that would be part of the evaluation of costs anyway. Um, but it's not likely that our water main is, you know, stuck to the sur that high to the surface of the road. But who knows? I'm not an engineer, so. I, I do think if he's not here, obviously, but if the DPW director were here, and I, I think he would probably say that if we were going to invest the town's money in whatever proportion of a project, involving uh, a, a, a road, in quotation, with pipes on the ground that we would want to address whatever condition those pipes are in. Whose responsibility that is, and he would say he's not going to, that's for us to decide here. Right. And, but and why, I would why have, have to assume that we have these, just like the roadways, the public roadways, that we also have our water mains uh, on a schedule of replacement depending on their age. So I would assume we have that in progress as so, it is. So we have water mains, but these are not mains. Th these instances would almost entirely be um, individual house services that are the responsibility of the private homeowner mm -hmm. to the point where they connect with the main. And I think that's the concern that would be highlighted here. I see. So they, would, they might be stuck in the middle of the road that's being repaved. And Correct. And they're going to get impacted by that. Or that we may know that they're dated and that they before we pave the road that we ought to have a water main extending the length of it if we're going to invest the town's money. That, that's really what the, the issue is. Do we want to get into that? And w you know, when we're just doing a top coat on it, it's not as big a deal. But when you're talking about the reconstruction that you just described you, with potential stormwater implications, that's a bigger project. And you know, I, I think the DPW director would say that the best practice would be to address whatever's on the ground at that point in time. So, I, and I'm sorry if I didn't make that clear from the beginning. The, no, the, the, I, I do the, understand the, the, now the, what you're talking about, yeah. right? I thought you were talking about just roadway water, water main replacement. These are services that run underneath the shared access yeah. or easement in the okay. case of Swamp Pond Road. Yeah, that makes sense, yes. Well, let's have a weigh-in, though, like uh, Mr. Walner suggested. Let's bring this to these different uh, directors for a weigh-in. Could send it to the Planning Commission and the DPW Director Definitely. for feedback. Definitely, yes, yes. We just have them address the issues that we talked about tonight and give us a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so.
So moving along, I think we're on to the rest of, <coughs> hopefully we addressed most of your town administrators report with the bike, the rail, the rail strip. Do you have a lot more, Mr. Gilberto? Uh, yeah, yeah. One more, maybe two more things? I, I, can, I can speak quickly and I won't speak to the things no, that have already sorry. happened. It's all right. It's all right, take your time, the hour is late. Skipping through to the third item in the report, um, we've been approached by an area synagogue with congregants who lived in North Reading, who live in North Reading, offering to place a menorah on the town, com town common. So we've uh, identified an area in the upper area of the common that's accessible to the parking lot at the senior center, at which the menorah is expected to be placed um, probably within the next week or so. Um, told the details about a possible ceremonial lighting will be available soon. I hope to have that information from the uh, rabbi from the congregation uh, as soon as tomorrow morning. Um, we wouldn't be hosting the event, um, but it would be accommodated at the common, much like the tree lighting that took place earlier um, in December. Nice. Um, How big is the menorah? Is it? Uh, I don't have the dimensions. I can tell you that I believe it was previously <coughs> affixed to a gazebo <coughs> in the town of Andover, um, okay. I, I believe. Um, but uh, in terms of its size, I, 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 don't, I don't want to misstate it. I, 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 so for some reason, but roughly three feet tall stands oh, okay. stands out to me. Um, I attached a copy of tobacco regulations uh, pending with the Board of Health. Uh, they were the subject of a hearing that was held on November 21st, and I'm told that the hearing has been continued until January. I also attached updated information regarding the state's activities on this matter. Um, the Board of Health is going to evaluate its proposal and the state's new regulations at their meeting in January. DPW is beginning a townwide municipal water system leak detection survey that's expected to take approximately three months. The work will be in the southeast air will begin in the southeast area of town near the Linfield town line and will continue moving north and west. The work is being conducted by Arthur Pyburn and Sons Technical Services and their vehicles are marked accordingly. The police department's also been informed. Um, auxil auxiliary election workers are needed for calendar year 2020. The town clerk's office is looking for workers to supplement our current team of dedicated individuals in anticipation of the upcoming 2020 election cycle. The attached information is available on the town website or by calling the town clerk's office at 978-357-5218. Finally, I attached a copy of an agenda for a recent transportation and climate initiative briefing that I attended with Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Katie Theor uh, Theoris. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Transportation and Climate Initiative is a regional collaboration of 12 Northeast and Mid-Atlantic states and the District of Columbia that seeks to improve transportation, develop clean e the clean energy economy, and reduce carbon emissions from the transportation sector. The participating states are Connecticut, Delaware, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Virginia. Additional information, including a report that was referenced in the meeting, is attached as a follow-up to this meeting. I'll be revisiting the potential advantages of the town becoming a state-designated green community through the State Department of Environmental Resources. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. O'Leary mentioned and has reminded me, um, we have a conservation com uh, commission member who recently went through a certification program at the state level, Melissa Campbell. She was reappointed this evening, so we congratulate her, not only for the time that she has put into the commission, but for the time she put in outside of her service on the commission to go through that program. Mr. Gilberto, I should have asked you this in our last uh, item on the agenda, but what is the status with Swan Pond and their pursuit of the um, there's been no change in status to my understanding. Um, you know, we've um, not heard any update from the residents, um, nor have we requested one. And on our end, obviously, we're working on the policy stuff, so okay. no, no change. Okay. Any members have any questions? We're on to old and new business. Mr. O'Leary? Um, just uh, what I mentioned, you know, a couple, couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, we, uh, we honored Larry Dysart and um, his service to the community and Larry passed away you know, a couple of weeks ago was uh, services were uh, yesterday and today you know to uh, his wife and children again our condolences and uh, heartfelt gratitude for sharing Larry with us for the last 40 plus years and uh, the services that he provided to the community and um, stimulating and 
in uh, allowing the accessibility to uh, youth basketball, uh, not just in North Reading, but regionally. Uh, tremendous uh, contributions, uh, not just on that front, but on many other fronts here in our community. So our condolences uh, should go out again to, to Larry, and I'm, I'm pleased that we were able to uh, recognize him, you know, and he was able to uh, uh, see it on, on television that night and appreciated it too, so. Sad by his passing, but uh, grateful for his presence in our community for 40 plus years and his level of service. Uh, additionally, the uh, just like to state that uh, I think you know what occurred uh, this evening in relation to the uh, Board of Appeals is unfortunate, and uh, I think uh, the repercussions are going to be felt for a long time to come. And I think the standing of this board in relation to the boards and committee commissions and appointments that we make have been harmed. Uh, but again, we'll get through it. And I think uh, it was a mistake. I think it's unfortunate. It was avoidable. And uh, hopefully going forward, the uh, board learns from it. And other than that, uh, wishing everybody in the community a uh, happy holiday season, happy Hanukkah, and again, uh, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year, and look forward to uh, Addressing the issues that are before us with the board in the upcoming year. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Mr. Good. Palmer, you good? Mr. Schultz? Well, again, Merry Christmas to everybody out there, and my condolences to the Dysart family. Uh, also, a, a number of, of residents have reached out to me about having a petition on town meeting in June for term limits for this board, and it's something I think they should, should probably should be explored at some point, too. And uh, I'll be meeting with them in the future on that. Thank you. Ms. Gonzalez. I would just like to give a shout out to Al Pereira, advanced photo um, about Light Up Main Street. I think that um, it's been great seeing all the businesses um, lighten up. I'd love to see more. It, it really looks pretty when you drive down Main Street. Um, and a shout out to Jerry Farrelly and Pat Lee for opening up the Horseshoe Grill on Sunday for the DCF kids and all the people that came out and wrapped presents and and helped out it was a great community effort um, real feel good so happy holidays to everybody I almost forgot one more thing if I may the music man oh, you, you were gonna yes. say it I don't know if you didn't I see it it was like a Broadway production <laughs> I mean those kids did a fabulous job and it was something that if you went to Boston paid money at a theater in Boston you would have been happy walking out of there great job by those kids it was an amazing job and I, I went to it twice and yeah. it was tremendous I yeah. saw four shows <laughs> of the music <laughs> band if you did not see it you missed something incredible Mrs. Kane did an amazing Always those does. kids the maskers they were unbelievable they were just a professional show from the beginning yeah. to the yeah. end entertaining Hold uh, example, did you forget you're watching high school performers? Mm -hmm. You really do. They were excellent. The last show I happened to sit near a woman who's the aunt of the choreographer, Chrissy, Chris, Chrissy <coughs> Bowman, and she told me that that um, 33 years earlier, her five children had all participated in the Medford Music Band production, but ours blew that out of the water, of course. So. It, it was just an unbelievable jo job, phenomenal, phenomenal group of talented actors, technicians, dancers, singers. They had a horse. They had a horse. It was, <laughs> it was horse. really something else. So congratulations to them. It was excellent. And, um, and um, also just wanted to thank my colleagues, I, I know we had a little raucous evening this evening, but I do think we're, you know, committed to progress for the town and moving things forward for the town. And I just want to thank, before we head into the new year, thank my colleagues for your, you know, commitment and your service, which is also volunteer. And from what I've seen so far as the chair, it's miles and miles and miles and hours and hours and hours of commitment that people make to this board just like they do to other boards and just like we we celebrated mr dysart for his you know hours of commitment throughout the years and so i just want to thank my colleagues because i appreciate your commitment to all of the things you're doing 
on behalf of the town and on behalf of all the different boards and commissions and the other projects we put you on <laughs> to, to help out with. And it's unseen, it's unspoken of, and I just want to, I want to acknowledge that and also wish everybody a, you know, happy, happy holidays. We won't meet again before the new year. Happy, holy, healthy new year. Let's just keep moving forward and we, we definitely don't agree on everything. We don't have to agree on everything. We're five different members and five different members can have five different opinions on what the color blue is and that's life and that, you know, that, that doesn't, you know, that we should just keep moving forward and I appreciate your commitment. And um, just that. What, what other thing we forgot? And, uh, we did. We How did. could we have forgotten anything else? Quarter of 11. I know. But uh, John Bernard is retiring oh, yes. Yes. January 1st. Yes. John Bernard is retiring right. January 1st as superintendent of schools. He's been with us for 17 years as principal of the high school yes. and superintendent of schools. And uh, the chair and I and the town administrator were president at his last school committee meeting. And uh, uh, there's nice testimonials uh, by different people that yes. uh, put forth. And uh, <coughs> when we were at the financial planning team meeting uh, just this uh, Friday, uh, his last one of those. And, uh, What's interesting, I said to John, it's a good thing that you know you have all these experiences now because now he's an expert in wastewater treatment plants. <laughs> he's an expert in uh, in lighting and in school systems. I said he's, oh. he's experts in building the, the world's most expensive bathrooms <laughs> you know, down the fields. So he's got a lot of uh, different uh, skill sets now that he can fall back on in his retirement. But I know uh, all of us wish him uh, well and a long, healthy, and happy retirement, and are certainly grateful for his uh, service to our community. Um, you know, as a as a true professional, and again, he's uh, he's done a great job, uh, particularly in fostering good relations uh, with this board, the school department, and the town administration. So, uh, to John, wish him nothing but uh, good health and long, happy, and healthy retirement. He set us up well to keep moving in that trajectory too. All right. Okay. Anything? Else? Oh, uh oh, Mr. Gilbert. <laughs> Very important. I've been alerted to some questions online with regard to the status of trash collection tomorrow given the weather and it remains on as scheduled so items should be curbside by 6 30 tomorrow morning All trash right. and recycling both scheduled to go forward that's important yep. for anyone who's yes, actually is. still watching this all right thank you okay move to adjourn motion to adjourn all in favor aye, aye. we're done